Welcome back, Seth Bling here. Let's see, let me make sure audio, no. Yes. <laughs> Wait, hello? Test, testing, test, test, test. Okay, yeah. That's weird. I guess if I point, okay, no, it's good. It's all good. Okay, so um, here we are in Minecraft. I've been playing Minecraft recently, messing around with redstone stuffs and things. Slimestone and apparently leaves are now useful for redstone. I don't know. Uh, today I'm going to be doing a... Well, I'm going to be trying to do a challenge that I made for myself. Well, and other people too, the challenge. <clears throat> I call it the five by five timer challenge. The basic idea is you have a button on the outside of this box and a TNT on the outside of this box, and you want to delay the time between the button press and the TNT explosion as much as possible. So this one is not like the optimal design, but it's an example. It's just a bunch of repeaters. It takes 3.2 seconds. Uh, and then this is one I was just working on that uh, the that uses the um, binary counter with observers that I showed last week. Um, Cause that was kind of what made me think of this was like the binary counter has formed a really long clock, but um, how, how compact can you get a clock? Uh, this one takes like, what is it? 20, no, 12 seconds. I think Here, let's just, uh, Oh no, I don't want to anyway. <clears throat> So I'm going to be playing around with some other designs. Um, and uh, and definitely listening for suggestions from you guys. But I have a few ideas already. There's a lot of new stuff in Minecraft. So I'm sure I like a lot of new stuff since I last played. So I'm sure there's a ton of stuff that I'm not really familiar with. That would be good to know. That you guys, Some of you guys probably are can help me with. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, like I said, I'm gonna, I'm trying to do this five by five timer challenge. <clears throat> the delay between the button press and the TNT exploding should be as large as possible. Oh, there was no sound. Oh, no, wait. Oh, there probably was. <clears throat> Welcome back. Taking you down here. Thanks for resubbing for 23 months. It's almost two years. So cool. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. Okay, so, uh, so basically the way this one works, yeah, as large as possible, but not infinite, because then it wouldn't be a timer. It would just be nothing. <laughs> it would be nothing. <clears throat> so um so the way this one works is there is a button that activates this dropper and then there's like a little hopper clock these are just pointed at each other that gets read out here and then from here it's just a series of uh, binary counters it goes here to here to here to here to here and then that's it so the link in the title doesn't go anywhere. Oh, right. I didn't share it. Hold on. Let me, yeah, let me uh, get, get shareable link. All right. I think that probably made, made it work, but let's see. Yeah, okay. That should work now. Yes. Okay, cool. So, um, can you make an infinite binary counter, like, loop on itself? Well, it doesn't really make any sense. <laughs> the, I, the, the concept itself doesn't really make any sense. If it looped on itself, then it would, um, like, you have a clock driving it, and if it looped on itself, then you would have the clock and itself driving it, and so it would just, like, loop a little bit faster, or increase a little bit faster, and then overflow. Like, I don't know, it just doesn't really make any sense. Um, 
<clears throat> so I had an idea. I had an idea for so so. There's kind of like what I I've experimented with these a little bit. You, you can see over there. There's some more designs, although I kind of changed the constraints. Like uh, over here, what I my constraint was like the button and the TNT had to be on the inside of the five by five area. So I had the button like here, and the TNT was represented by this upward facing piston. So I changed that so that the button and the TNT are on the outside because I wanted I want to be able to cover this whole thing with obsidian so that the whole thing is enclosed. So um, it's sort of like a black box, like literally a black box. Welcome back, Greasy Woo here. <clears throat> yeah, I really dislike that they removed the no ads thing from Twitch Prime. Like, it kind they kind of did a bait and switch with Twitch Prime because they were like, oh, you don't need Turbo anymore. Because Twitch Prime does that. Yeah. I mean, it was kind of ine inevitable that they were going to bait and switch us, but... Welcome back, hey <laughs> Harry here. Thanks for having a Twitch Prime. But, I mean, it, like Twitch Prime is just kind of like free for a lot of people because they already have Amazon Prime. Turbo is still a thing, and it's the only way to get an, an ad-free experience from Twitch now. Because, like, ad block doesn't even work. So... That's cool. Anyway, so what I've learned is uh, there's kind of like in order to do this, you kind of need like a some timer or some clock that like just goes on its own. And then you also need like a bunch of exponential delay beyond that. So that's what this has, right? There's a clock here that goes just goes back and forth between these two. And then there's an exponential delay in the form of bi a binary counter. <clears throat> so you want the longest delay on the clock as possible, and you want the most number of exponential delay. Um, and so both of those are things you want to... So either a larger number of exponential delay modules or a larger base for the exponential delay. Instead of binary, which has a base of two, you could have like... Anyway, there's other stuff you can do, which has a much better uh, exponential base. Uh, for multiplication. So what I was looking at though was like uh, you do something like this where um, or here I want to whoops. Um, so okay so you have like a clock here. Let's see that doesn't the problem is you can't you can't do this because you're not allowed to build up here. Like there's there should be an obsidian roof to this. So that doesn't work. Um, so anyway you can do something like this though. Okay, so you have a clock here, and so this is a way I came up with of like sort of building the clock into the button press on the from the outside. Because otherwise, you like over here, I have a button press, and that just goes into this dropper, and the dropper is never used for anything again. So it's kind of a waste of a block. Anyway, so so this one is like sort of budding the uh, the piston with a button press, and so you you like start the timer that way. Which is a little bit more, uh, just a little bit more space efficient. Except that, like, this clock takes up eight blocks, whereas this clock only takes up four blocks. But this clock also pulses faster than this one. Anyway, so there's uh, there's all kinds of like weird constraints and stuff. I'm not sure what the what this like smallest clock I can make is. Obviously, like this one's pretty small, four by one. Of course, it's four because you need a comparator to read the output from the. Uh, Oh, there's another there's another design you can do with a regular piston and two uh, two observers. It's a really fast clock though. Uh, let me get some observers too. So you do um, regular piston uh, observer. No, other way around. Come on. Ah. So I really hate how hard it is to place these the correct, the, like the direction that you want to place them. God, like you just have to be at just the right angle. I really wish they would revise the the direction algorithm for pistons and observers and stuff. I think it's like there's just no indicate like if, if it, there's no visual indication for which way it's going to go. You just like have to judge whether you're beyond the forty five degree angle or whatever. Welcome back, J Dad's one here. Thanks for subbing for forty nine months. Could you use a day night sensor? I don't think so cuz you have to you have to cover this whole thing in obsidian. That is a good point though. That's a good uh 
It's a good thing to bring up. I don't, yeah, and I don't think the day night sensor works if it's, you know, covered like that. I've seen some situations in which it does, but I don't think in this case it would, like being completely covered by obsidian. Yeah, I moved in with my girlfriend like eight months ago. No, not eight months, six months. Is there a prize slash time limit for this challenge? No, there's no prize or time limit. It's really something I'm just trying to challenge myself with, but I just think other people would have fun trying to do the challenge too. So my goal is today to come up with a few designs I can show and um, and do as good as I can. And I'm sure that I'm not going to be... <laughs> I'm sure other people will come up with something that's like a hundred times. I'm not even kidding about that scale, like literally a hundred times or even a thousand or a million. Like there's ex there, there's the potential for exponential improvements with this sort of thing. So like if I come up with something that lasts like two years, I'm sure like, I'm pretty sure somebody will come up with something that lasts a century. Like I'm not, I'm not exaggerating. I, I actually think that's going to happen, but, um, uh, Yeah, you can't, uh, so there's no spawn eggs, so you can't use bats anyway. Like, there, you, you can't use spawn eggs and you can't use entities. See, like, there can't be entities built into it. Um, yeah, so so a hopper clock was something I was playing around with. Uh, I have a design right here for a hopper clock that fits into the 5x5 five five area. It's like these two hoppers, and then these are the two pistons. There's a redstone block, and then this gets the signal around from this hopper. So that is something I'm going to be playing around with, and I actually think that's a really good one to use. Um, yeah, you can't use... Yeah, you can't use things that are random like that. Yeah, chickens laying, laying eggs, that sort of thing. Um, just no randomness, because it just makes it like too arbitrary how you time it, even. Uh, welcome back, Diggy Dog SP2 here. What you could do is... Uh, if you have some way of generating generating entities on top of like a wooden pressure plate, you could use that as a five minute delay. So that could be like the base timer. If you can make a clock out of that. Actually, yeah, that's that's a, that's a let's try that. Let's see what let's see what we can do with that. Uh, I want a dropper. Let's see what we can do with that. Does it have to reset itself? No, no, it's a one-time use thing. Does not have to reset. Let's see. Let's see what we can do with this. So the yeah, this this there is a slight amount of randomness because like the hang time of the item before it touches the pressure plate is gonna vary a little bit. But uh so we get a dropper into a pressure plate. We're gonna um Yeah, so what I'm gonna do I have an idea for this, I think. Okay, I need uh, just some block. For now, I just need some block to block this in. So we have sandstone. Oh, you do need something to read the signal from the pressure plate while still blocking in. Because you, if, if any items can escape out of this, then the clock is random and it won't necessarily even complete. Welcome back, Firesaf here. Thanks for subbing for 44 months. That's so long. Yeah, the timer does need to be 100% consistent. There can't be any like significant randomness. Uh, you can use arrows out of a dispenser, yeah. Uh, one of the rules is there's no starting entities, but you can create entities as part of the machine. Uh, brewing stands could work, yeah. It's a little hard to use brewing stands because you need to, like, it's a one tall area, so you can't, like, suck items out of it. So there's a lot of things you can't use because of that. There's also, like, you can't really use shulker boxes because you would have no way of, of like, picking up a shulker box if you broke it, that sort of thing. There's a lot of constraints that come with the one tall area, and it kind of conveniently reduces a lot of options for things that would be potentially kind of broken. Observer counting lo lava disappearing updates. Uh, that could be interesting. I don't think that's random, and um, but it, it could take up a lot of space, right? I, I think it would take up a lot of space. Anyway, so I'm gonna work on this real quick. So we have, um, so like let's let's try this. Uh, 
Let's um, let's grab some redstone dust and just just see what this does. So this is gonna pulse a couple times. Um, let's just drop in a stack of redstone blocks. So so you have a button. So here's our base clock, right? Oh, uh, hold on. Let's let's actually cover this. So it, sh it should be covered. Actually, let's use. I'll actually just use obsidian. So it's, this should be the whole thing should be covered with a ceiling. So let's just make sure that yeah, there's the item in there. So what'll happen is that'll take five minutes to despawn, and then after five minutes, uh, uh, the observer it'll despawn. The observer will trigger. Uh, or the pressure plate will come up. The observer will trigger. It'll spit out another item. The pressure plate will trigger again. Trigger the observer again because it'll get pressed. And so it'll spit out a second item. So this is going to do two items per cycle. But it'll be about five minutes per pair of items. So this is already like quite a long timer. Uh, let's see. Where was that? Oh, welcome back. Diggy Dog SP2 here. Oh, sorry. Welcome back, Block Teen here. Thank you to Diggy Dog SP2 for gifting a sub to Block Teen. That's really nice of you. And Gratz, Gratz Block Teen. Is uh, this system okay for Minecraft server? I'm not sure what you're asking. How much horizontal space? It's five by five. This is called the five by five timer challenge. So yeah, this will be yeah. Uh, let's see. I should just leave a calculator up, like. I'm gonna I'm gonna do this. <laughs> Add source screen capture. Let's um let's leave this calculator up in the corner because <laughs> it's gonna be useful, I think. <laughs> and I can actually probably make this uh I don't think I need to let's see. So I wanna do um so what is it? It's sixty-four times nine so that's the number of items that fit in there um but we're only using every other item and then so 1440 minutes so we're already at 24 hours this is one day this, this clock lasts one day <laughs> and it takes up a very small amount of space this is actually really great we're gonna use this this is how we're gonna we're gonna this is the base clock oh man that leaves so much space too wow Oh, I like this. Then we, well, like, so, like, what if we just did this? So, binary, just like a, a straight, straight up, like, straightforward binary clock. And we put an observer here. Or not, a, yeah, it doesn't matter if it's an observer. No, it does need to be an observer. And we would want to put that, like, here. So now. Let's um, kill Eddie type equals item, distance equals dot dot five. So every time we do this, uh, let's do 15. Oh, it didn't, uh, it didn't trigger. It needs to trigger it every single time, doesn't it? Okay, never mind. This does not work. <laughs> All right, that's, that's okay. So let's, uh, I want to use a different block than that. Let's, uh, so let's use sandstone. So that it's a little bit easier to see. So, okay, let's start this again. Cool. Cool. So, yeah, this is just a way of forcing the timer. Okay, cool. So, if you have two waters flowing each other and drop an item in, will it move back and forth? <laughs> Between the collision point until it despawns. Uh, I'm not sure what that would achieve. Moving it back and forth. This is already like a really good timer, though. Um, oh, you know what though? Hold on. This is not quite. This is not quite good enough because we actually have to detect when this thing. No, we don't have to detect when this thing. Wait. Yeah, this this is not useful. What am I what am I doing here? How, like how do I actually use this to build a timer? Like if I, if this was my only thing, I could just detect when it runs out. 
Okay, I'm not sure this is that good actually. So okay, let's let's do this. Let's let's just do do a thing where we detect it when it's empty, and then and we'll see like what what kind of time. But you can't actually use this in co in conjunction with other items, uh, with other like blocks or or whatever, because this is gonna trigger every five minutes. You you kind of can. But like really the, the like the five minutes time like the the twenty four hours thing is just like kind of a hard limit on how long this whole thing can last in general. Okay, so anyway, let's let's just uh, let's just build it real quick and then and then see what we can do. So we 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 do an observer on the side, but like the whole clock is just going to stop running after twenty four hours no matter what. Oh, unless. Unless we don't have it trigger itself, unless we have something that takes a long time to trigger it. So this is like sort of a recursion thing. Hmm. But it just this just adds five minutes to the recursion. It doesn't like it doesn't multiply by five minutes. So yeah, this isn't that good actually. Uh, I mean, it's twenty four hours, which is which is nice, but like. It's, um, I don't think it's, this is going to end up being used in the, like, a, like a really good design. Anyway, so we just use a comparator to get the output of this and then a inverter and that's kind of it. So this doesn't need to be too fancy here. Let's see, get a torch. And, uh, whatever, sure. Um, so this we fill up. Let's see who was that? Wait. Oh, cool. Whenever I open the calculator, it'll come up. Nice. Okay. Uh, welcome back, Nemesis Moore is here. Thanks for having a Twitch Prime. Um. Yeah, I guess that's true. Yeah, you could have. You could just fill the rest of the area with hoppers. Yeah. Okay. That's that's a way to extend it by a lot. Yeah, okay. All right. Uh, we, we'll have to rearrange this. Okay, so, so let's actually try and optimize this a little bit. I, I was thinking, you're, you're right, that's a really good idea. Um, of course, we can't use like chests or anything because there's no way to insert chests into a hopper chain. So let's... Oops. Yeah, let's, let's think a little bit harder about how we want to organize this then. So we need the button to be next to the dropper to start the whole chain. Um, we need a comparator coming out of the hopper with an inverter. Uh, let's, um, oh, you know what we don't, what we can do is, uh, put an observer here. Whoops. So comparator coming out of that and then an observer just like right here. Or, I guess it doesn't really matter which direction. It'll, it'll be facing the TNT. No, it has to be this way. What am I? T yeah, because it has to detect changes to this. So basically, we fill this with with the items first, and once it's completely empty, then this will turn off and the observer will trigger. And so we put the TNT out here. Okay. So then we need a clock. Uh, the problem is we need a clock. We also need the hoppers to feed into it. So what can this look like? So we have a hopper feeding in. Get that pressure plate back. Um, we need an observer next to the... Hmm. It's actually going to be tricky. Oh, no, you know what we can do? I, I've got it. Uh, we can actually put a block between... This works, I think. Um, this will still read from the hopper. Let's just verify. Yeah, it's still reading from the hopper. All right, and then um, then we can. I think we can do this, and then uh, yeah, we have the observer reading from the pressure plates. So and then um, 
like that. Uh, no, I need a. I think I think I just need to put an observer here. Will that trigger twice or or once? Okay, yeah, that's good. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. So this is probably not as compact as it can possibly be, but it's pretty good. These only have five slots a piece, but that's okay. Yeah, we had snow. Uh, if you saw on my Twitter, uh, there was uh, we made a snow fort. <laughs> It's pretty great. Uh, I need to make sure nothing, none of this is like powered permanently. I don't think so. So this is the end. Like, let's make sure. Let's make sure this makes it all the way over here. Oh, this one's powered. Ew. Okay, that's not quite gonna work, huh? I didn't think about that. Um. What do I do about this? Hmm. Uh, we're reading the output from the dropper right here. This comparator is reading from the from the dropper. It's not going to be powered when the item disappears. You're right. That is actually a good point. So that it's getting trapped here, but once once the item disappears, it'll have plenty of time to filter. Okay, yeah, perfect. And so let's actually put let's actually like fill these. And like just make sure that it's flowing along correctly. So then when we do this, it's full, it's not full, ooh. Uh, that's actually a problem, that it doesn't have enough time for two items to make it through. Oh, is this one powered, wait. Ooh. Oh, because this one's full. There might be randomness to this. Because that time I think two items did make it through. Oh, no, no, no. This is just, it's just that this freezes. Okay, so this dispenses, which freezes this, and then one flows in, and then it shoots another, and another flows in. So it's it's like, it's it's working, actually. This is fine, yeah. I don't, daylight sensors don't work if they're underneath a roof, do, do they? Yeah, it's supposed to, there's supposed to be a roof of obsidian here. Okay, so let's just make sure real quick. Oh, that, that is a problem. If two items get dispensed off to the side there, let's just see, like, yeah, okay. So this is a problem, the hitbox of this, of this, uh, Hopper. Because if two items get dispensed off to the side there, then it's not going to, it's going to break the loop. Um, what can I do about that? Is there anything I can do about that without like changing the design very much? Oh yeah. If I made it a dropper, that'd work. Cause it's getting, yeah. Okay. That's a good idea. That's a really good idea, and it'll actually increase the capacity too. Okay. So let's fill this up real quick. Uh, oops. Eh. <laughs> okay, that's fine. Yeah, that's a really... No, that's not quite gonna work, because now I'm only getting, I'm only gonna get one Okay, so here's why it won't work. This outputs two every time, whereas this is only gonna output one every time. And so this is eventually going to empty out, or maybe, I guess this one. Like we have 62 in the bottom stack here, now we have 61. So this one will, will eventually empty out. And 
and now then this one will, will empty out. Um, I don't need to output, but it's kind of a consequence of using observer. Is there some other way I can get the signal from this uh, from this pressure plate? A oh, repeater on four ticks. Well, that I don't think that'll work, but we'll we'll try it. Whoa, what was that? It's doing three now. <laughs> it's even worse. Interesting. I think it's because the pressure plate itself is triggering the, the dropper. So that was that's even worse. Is there some way to get this to only... Wait. Yeah, it was on four. Yeah, yeah, it was on four. Is there some way to get this to be only a single... Um, single pulse to this. That would be great because it would both double the life of this and allow this dropper to work. Can I use string instead of a plate? Uh, I probably could. I don't think that would change much. I guess that would like, well, it would for one prevent this dropper from firing. Um, yeah, I can't put redstone dust here because then the items will overshoot or, or here either because it could go off to the side. I need, I need like a full block next to this pressure plate. Is it? No. So the reason, no, so the, pre the pressure plate will power the dropper, but that doesn't help. Oh, the mic changed. I'm, hold on. Okay, uh, I think it's back. <sighs> I've been having this problem where when I'm using a program that actually reads from the microphone, I don't know, just occasionally the mic just stops working. It's really annoying. Anyway, the pressure plate needs to be like, the signal needs to be inverted from the pressure plate, right? Because you want it so that when the pressure plate gets depowered that it triggers the observer. The observer triggers when the comparator changes signal strength. Uh, oh, no, it doesn't. That's not true. I thought that would be true, but it's not. So let's, let me just prove it to you. Let's, uh, I'm sure I can just put another dropper here. So let's fill this up. And then let's put one item in here. And I'll start here. I'm taking out a stack. Here's another stack, another stack. Notice there's no boop, boop, boop. Beep, still nothing, this is still in there. Boop, bop. Oh, what? Okay, I forgot. Oh, plus I need an observer. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> okay, I, 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 that was what? Uh, okay, then I have to fill this back up again. Okay, there goes the stack. There's stack. There's still an item in there. Um, ba -doo -ba -doo. Shoot -ba -doo -bop. Boop -ba -doo -bop. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if they changed it, but like, I guess the observer only has an on or off state, and whatever is on the other side of the observer is responsible for actually changing state. So, like, basically, it's like you have a redstone dust here, an observer, whatever, an observer here, and a dropper here. Whenever there's an uh, uh, an update to this, it like this thing decides whether it's turning on or off and it propagates a change to whatever's here. And then whatever's here is responsible for going over here and reading the like input strength. And so the observer just turns on and off or the comparator just turns on and off. Anyway. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. The observer, like the, or the comparator must track its state somewhere. Like, uh, 
powered false is the only like powered true. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know why exactly it uh like but you can see here there's like in the in the block data on the right over here there's nothing. This is this is what will determine if there's a observer update over here. If something here changes then then that'll um cause a cause an observer to trigger, but that's just powered or unpowered. Okay, so we're back to I'm back to like reading suggestions for how we can turn this into a single pulse. <laughs> Five minutes are up. Or or we can or some way we could double the pulse here or something, but or another full block we could put here that would uh, I don't know about that one though. No, it, letting only one item through is not okay. It'll this will empty, but like long before all of these have a chance to like to fill it up. This like this is going to empty, and then this will empty, and then it'll be done, and and this will trigger. Sticky piston. What about a sticky piston? Shoot an arrow into a wooden button. Huh. That's actually kind of cute. Uh, let's try it. Well, what would that do? How would that work? So you, but the, you would need the wooden button to be like, I don't think that would work with the way we have this set up. We would have to try something else. Cause, cause we need there to be a solid block here and not a wooden button here. And we need this solid block to be here so that we can both get an input signal to, so like, oh, I guess maybe you could do it. Huh? No, I'm not sure. I'm not sure how you would do it without like, yeah, uh, I guess you could maybe remove a bunch of these to get us to get the signal in. No, it's not that the arrow despawns after one minute. It's just a way of creating a, a like a longer pulse so that the thing doesn't fire twice. So the first the first arrow triggers the button, and that and then uh, use a piston. How does a piston help? Okay, what I could do, there is actually something I could do with a piston that I can think of. It'd be like, you put this here. So this is gonna trigger twice. Okay, so wh what about like, um, no, but then this will still trigger twice. Yeah, we're trying to get it to do only a single pulse right now. Do them in a box. Single, to spit out a single item at a time. Replace the observer that detects the pressure plate with a repeater with delay. I, I need a solid block here. Otherwise, the item won't land on the pressure plate. I need a solid block on all sides, and I still need to detect if the pressure plate's changing. And you can't... I don't know of any block that does that other than an observer. Uh, okay. Oh yeah. Yeah. So what if I did it like this? That could work. It's a little bit, takes up a little bit more space, but, and then, um, no, this still doesn't, cause I still need to get the signal into this while having a full block here. Oh, actually, a no block might work. Uh, or like a lamp, a redstone lamp. If I can get a signal, like, 
a power signal into this redstone lamp. Um, how would I even do that though from here? Because redstone lamps like have a certain amount of delay before they can turn on, like turning on and off. Oh no, this is still, this is still triggered twice. Cause it's still gonna turn on and then turn off. You need something that like is toggling every time it gets a pulse. We need a T flip flop is what we need, which is this. Hold on. So maybe, maybe this is the right thing to do. Maybe it's like this. No, because it's still going to get two pulses here. Oops, that didn't. You need something every four times. Like, <laughs> this needs to trigger every f <sighs> This is really, like, confusing. Place the pressure plate in the corner. How, then I can't read. Like I can't both put a hop. Like I'm trying to get the hopper into it. I'm trying to read the item from out of it, and I'm trying to also power it. So I need I need at least three sides of this thing visible. If I move it in, I would have four sides visible. That might help. But I would allow, allow for fewer droppers probably. Let's. Let's try moving it in real quick and seeing what we can do with that. It's it's not okay. No, it's not okay that it's doing two items at a time because look at this look at this this hopper. This hopper is unfilling even though there is like plenty of items that are trying to get into it. Every time I do this, see look, it's at 46. Now it's at 45. Every time I do this, I lose an item out of here, and eventually this will unfill, and then this will unfill, even though we have this whole line of hoppers leading in. So it's not okay that we get two pulses here, unless we also get two pulses here. We need we, we need the, the, the hoppers to fill up at, at the same rate that this is dispensing items. Yeah, I might need to try moving the design in from a little bit, like, so if I like, let's say I had it here. Um, maybe I even want it just like right in the middle. Let's try it in the middle for, for a sec, just so that I can just see what it would be like. So we need this here. We still need an observer, or a, yeah, an observer reading the output. Uh, we also need. What do we need? We so the three things are observer, hopper, and input signal. Okay, so the input signal can come. Oh, this actually frees up a lot of space for input signal, huh? What? Why didn't that go in my hotbar? Okay, so. So we get the input signal here and reading here. So, so, so far this should, um, okay. So this, this does two pulses a piece. Yeah. Okay. And then what we can put the button right here. This is actually fine. So we, so let's say, let's, let's just, let me just turn it all off. So that's how you, that's how you can turn it off. So you can start it from the button. That'll start the cycle and it will continue itself. Okay, cool. Okay. So this is, this is pretty good actually. Um, then since the hopper is so available, in fact, we can move this whole design over by one and yeah, yeah. Okay. This is pretty good. I think we just needed to rearrange things a little bit. Let's let's just move this over. And uh, get rid of this stuff. And then the button needs to go here. Whoops. Uh, so we're still shooting twice. 
That's okay. Um, this doesn't need to be here. I think we're going to waste this space. And then, then we need just hoppers all the way in. Oh, we, we need the comparator. Wait, we still need the comparator. Right, but that's okay. So yeah, so we are going to waste one block here. Uh, man, I just... Okay. And then, the, so the TNT can go right here. And then the hopper goes in here and we sort of fill in snaking around it. But so what do we do? So we go around here. Uh, oh, and then it's like, okay, yeah, I think, I think I see what the, how do you, how you fill the rest? <clears throat> so it's like, boom, boom, boom. Yeah, there's nothing here that get, will get powered continuously, right? Okay, and then from here, this corner should go all the way, oops, all the way into here. Hold on, let me just, yeah, 50, it was, it was 57 a moment ago. Let's just try it again. Yep, okay. Okay, and then let's um, just make sure Why didn't it spit out another? Uh, I'm not really sure what just happened. I don't know why it didn't spit out another item. Oh, this. I think the. Uh, I think the pressure plate's broken. Why did this pressure plate break? Does anyone know why this pressure plate broke? Like that could be an obstacle if, if this isn't going to be reliable because the pressure plate's going to break. Oh yeah, I did move it with bling edit. That was probably it. Yeah. Okay. So here I can turn the whole thing off like this. So there shouldn't be an item in there. Yeah, there's not. <clears throat> so when we, let's just like verify. So we're at 48, 46. Okay, cool. Cool. Okay. So I can just turn it off by standing here. I think this is it. It works. Whoops. Oh, the I went in the hopper. All right. Yeah. Whatever. Um, I guess I'll just, <laughs> oh, can I just, what's the fastest way to fill this? <laughs> the last one also works and is way longer. This does not work. This one does not work. This is going to empty out over time. Oh, there's probably a command I could use to fill the inventory of these, like a ta like a data entity, uh, whatever data set, or um, in, uh, like a replace. No, what is it called? Uh, there's something that lets you set inventory items. Data merge, yeah, that one. I'm just gonna fill it up and then we'll calculate how long this takes. So 
Is there any... All right, I'm gonna have to wait, I think, a little bit for it to sort of like, all the items to filter through and then land where they're gonna land. Hold down mouse wheel, that's a thing. Uh, let's see, I guess I already filled them up, okay. Hold on, so if I do like this, oh, it does work. Oh, that's cool. Neat. <laughs> Learn something new every day. All right, cool. That's going to actually be really useful to come up. Okay. So. And then I need to put a TNT. Where does the TNT go? TNT goes right here. Cool. And then this is still filtering through. So let's calculate how long this takes. So how many stacks do we have? So there's 15 hoppers and a dropper, right? Oh, I got a sub. Let's see. Welcome back. The man 159 here. Thanks for resubbing for four years. <laughs> Whew. That's, that's a while. Thanks, man. You the man. Welcome back, Acidic Venom here. Thank you for subbing to Twitch Prime. If you weren't aware, Twitch Prime is a feature that comes for free with Amazon Prime. So if you or your family has Amazon Prime, you can link your account, get Twitch Prime for free, and it allows you to subscribe to one streamer per month for free. The streamer still gets the money, but it costs you nothing. Just putting that out there. Just saying. <clears throat> Control pick block. Oh, yeah, because then you can... Oh, that's smart. Okay. Yeah, I forgot you could do that. Control pick block. Welcome back, NJ here. Thanks for subbing with Twitch Prime. Okay, so let's calculate this. We have 15. So this is how many stacks plus another nine stacks. So that's how many total stacks there are times 64 items per stack. So that's how many items are in the system divided by two. 2688. Oh, welcome back. Bot Potato here. Thanks for setting up Twitch Prime. And welcome back, Conrad Oats here. Thank you also for setting up Twitch Prime. That's how many, um, basically, times this dispenser is going to go. Five minutes apiece. 24 hours. So that's how many minutes? 13,440. Whoops. Not tight. That, okay, divided by 60 to get hours. 224 hours. Divided by 24 hours. That's 9.3 days. Not too shabby. That's a, that's a good starting place. It's a good starting place. We can do better, though. I know we can do better. Because this is all, like, linear addition. So the, here's what I'm thinking. This is a really cool mechanic. And it's 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 neat. It's, it's, it's like, cool that you have a five-minute timer here. But you can't really use this in conjunction with other systems. Um... <laughs> Welcome back, Hun SW here. Thanks for subbing to Twitch Prime for nine months. Sub baby. So if you want to use this as an input to another system, you have like a five minute base timer. Um, and then, so let's say you had this going into some other thing, like a dropper that was dispensing items until it was empty. So that's going to happen every five minutes. But like this already also this already does something every five minutes, and like counts until something's empty. Basically, the fact this isn't like repeatable forever means you can't use this as like a conjunction in conjunction with anything else. Like, if you have something that has a really long timer that feeds into this and like only spits out an item every like, so let's say you had something that like lasted a day and then told this to only spit out an item every day. Then you only add five minutes onto the timer as part of that cycle. So that doesn't really help. And then if you want to use this to feed something else, so you like every five minutes you tell this to spit something out that like counts, it wouldn't help because this is still gonna 
trigger every five minutes. It basically, this doesn't do much um, other than just being something on its own. Um, I haven't tried chained ether clocks. So, well, I, I kind of have actually. So over here, I have this um, flat design that fits into a five by five space. So the, oh wait, this isn't the one. Uh, where is it? This one, okay. So I assume this is what you mean by an ether clock, right? It's two hoppers facing each other. One is full of items, the other isn't. You have a T flip flop that toggles which way the items flow. And so every like few minutes, it's like three minutes or something, uh, yeah, basically it's this clock. So I already have this built out, right? Um, every So this isn't filled out. This only has like 15 items. But every few minutes, uh, this clock will flip direction. And uh, and we can, so this one, you since, since this one lasts forever, you can use it in conjunction with some other counter. And, and it's pretty good. So... Um, yeah, so let's actually let's actually go over here. So uh, I built this with different constraints. The button and the TNT aren't on the outside, so the button's right here, and this thing, this piston facing upward, represents the TNT. Originally, my challenge was going to be with those things on the inside, but I actually want them on the outside. So, um, oh right, I was going to label this. Hopper. Whoa. What's happening? My game's frozen. Oh. <laughs> Hopper chain with item despawn. 9.33 days. All right, so let's go ahead and let's go ahead and build this thing. So, I need hoppers. I need comparators. I need actually I probably need needed that repeater and some redstone dust. I need s regular pistons, I guess. No, you want sticky pistons for this. So let's build my design. Um, so you have a sticky piston here and a sticky piston here. Um, this one, you have to read this direction. There just isn't enough room for the normal design. I do have two comparators in the hot part. Let's just free this up so that when I decide that I want to use it, I have that. Then we have a little inverter here. Uh, we need a redstone block. Uh, I wish the hot bar was bigger. <laughs> Whatever, I don't need pistons anymore. Um, this one needs to... Do that. So I think this works. Uh, I put it on the wrong side. Uh, why isn't... Oh, I'm not supposed to invert them. I'm s right. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not supposed to invert them. It's just supposed to be. There we go. Okay, it's like a little game of tug of war here. So this one's pretty cool because, um, th it repeats infinitely. And it gives us a fair amount of space here. I, I don't know. There might be a way to compact this a little bit more. I just need the comparator signal to get over here, but I don't know if there's a reasonable way to compact that. So, no, there can't be, you can't put any entities in, in your starting configuration. Um, and there's an obsidian roof. I guess you could spawn an entity in the roof. But I don't know how, I don't know why that would be useful. Maybe you could like, like drop, like, I guess you could have like a dropper facing upwards and, and so you have that drop like a hopper minecart and then you like dispense items into it. Like, so theoretically maybe that could be useful, but I have a hard time seeing it, but it's allowed. The piston on the right is useless. Uh, it's not. It looks useless, but it's not. It prevents this thing from extending. So let, let's, let's, let's uh, crank up the timer on this a little bit. So currently both sides are powered. And so this one wants to extend. So so the only thing stopping it is this extended piston arm. <laughs> Welcome back, Raul Marine Rojas here. Thanks for sending me to Prime. Um 
But yeah, so like if I removed this, if I removed this piston, this thing would be extended right now. And but same for same for this one and this one being extended right now. So you actually need both. This is a this is the 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 T flip flop design thing. You have to invert both signals. No, nah, you don't want to invert either signal. I don't think. It's using all the items. Yeah. Look, this is gonna empty out completely, and then. Okay, so then what I what I played around with from here was oh yeah, so also to um the way to make this um like startable uh, let's put this right here and then need a sticky piston here. So you um you move all the items into this and then so now wait uh what no, I guess you. Oh, right. No, no, no. You actually you want all the items in this one. Okay, so. So you have all the items in this one. Uh, this one wants to extend. This one's not extended. If I break this block now. Uh, this this piston will extend if it receives an update. So we can do this either going either direction. But uh, for now, let's just put down a button. Um, cause I don't, I don't know which side I want it to start on. Probably doesn't matter that much. So then we can, so like, there's a lot of blocks now that are going to trigger every, how long does this last? I, I'm not actually sure how long this lasts. It's, it's like a couple minutes though. Um, so then we can just use a dropper. So, so here's the here's the basic design principle here. You use a dropper and a comparator, and this thing is just full of items, and it's just an observer here. And so we still have a lot of extra room. So there's got to be some way to like. Anyway, so um, let's actually remove the items, a bunch of the items. Let's not make this clock last so long. Um, that actually caused an update. That's fine. And uh, you can put a let's really get a regular piston. So basically, this is how I can mimic a TNT without it uh, actually exploding. But yeah. So so this over time empties the drop the dispenser or the dropper here, and uh, and we don't really care what happens to the item. But yeah, every few seconds, right now it's every few seconds, but it'll be every few minutes, an item gets depleted from this. And eventually this will be empty, the observer will trigger, and the TNT will go off. <laughs> Take out one more item. So this is what, that's what it looks like. Okay. So you get the principle, right? Um, is there a way to make this last longer? Like we could double the time by adding like a binary counter piston thing or something like that. I don't know if that's useful. I don't know if that's useful. I mean, it's, it's definitely useful. It'll double the amount of time, but is there something better we can do? Can we like, I don't know. Is there some other like repeating like timer that we can have that's triggered on pulses? Oh, I guess again we can feed hoppers into this. That'll that'll multiply the amount by like a few. More hoppers in the clock. More hoppers on the clock is kind of hard to use. I guess it's I guess it's not that hard to use. But like it'll it'll also linearly increase the amount of time. Like if I double the amount of hoppers It'll double the amount of items, which doubles the time, but it won't, um, like I can do the same thing by just adding two hoppers onto this, right? Two hopper clocks with different timings and wait for them to sync up. Ooh. Oh my God. Yeah. 
Lumaraf, that's that's brilliant. If you have, in fact, you probably do. Like, oh, can you fit two into this space? Okay, we're gonna do this one first, and then we're gonna do that one because I think that one is gonna be the winner. I think that one's gonna be insanely, an insanely large clock, like amount of time. Basically, you have like an AND gate from two observers or something. Uh, from desynced. Yeah, sure, Fly Monster, you get credit too. Everyone who said it earlier but was ignored gets credit. I can't read everything. There's a lot of comments, and I'm also trying to focus on this. So don't be too sad. All right, so I like that idea a lot. All right, Brams, you get credit too. Okay, but but first let's just uh, let's just finish this off with like a little hopper clock, or not clock, uh, hopper chain. Uh, right. So what I want to do is fill this with TNT or whatever. Fill this with items, and then control click. Oops, need to fill it with items. Oh, it's still f unfilling. I thought it would. Okay, well, I just need to do this then. Yeah, that's a cool, that's a cool little thing. Okay. And let's make this timer longer too, so that it's not. Uh, whatever. Well. Okay, all right, it's full. Okay, so then we control click, right? Yeah. And then if I do this, yeah, sweet. And then, so these will be like, all I need is for one item to make its way through this chain every time this, this clock cycles. So it's okay that so these are powered sometimes. As long as they don't interfere with the rest of the redstone, which I don't think they should. Uh, this is all good. Daylight sensors won't work because part of the rules say that it's supposed to be covered with a ceiling of obsidian. So daylight sensors aren't gonna aren't gonna do anything. Yeah, yeah, we're talking. That's what we're talking about. Liquid block is having two co-prime numbers as the clock intervals, and then using an AND gate to to get the uh, the result, or maybe even more than two. You could probably do more than two if you use smaller clocks. Okay, well this is done. The only thing I need to do is count. I need to count this timer. Uh, I don't know how long this timer lasts. Oh yeah, also I can probably, oh these are already at four ticks, okay. Just for like a slightly increased delay. <laughs> um, this is gonna take a while to count. What I'll do is I'll count it for a single stack and multiply by five. Uh, you know what I need to do is just <laughs> uh, this. Oops. Oops. Okay. So this one's full right now. I'm going to time this for, for a single stack. For basically until it gets full again. So it's 1241, 34, 35. 37, 38, 39, 40. Okay, so it's 12, sorry, 12, 41, 40 is when I started it. And so I'll wait until this gets full again. And that won't quite be the exact amount of time, I don't think, because there's like a little bit of linear or uh, constant overhead for each cycle. What was it? I said 124140, right? Yeah. So. Well, welcome back, MC Pond here. Thanks for stepping up for 37 months with Twitch Prime. Uh, it's okay, I'm dropping on hoppers because the hoppers are full. 
320 and 319 are co-prime. Oh, uh, okay. It was like 30, 42. Th oh, it's not done yet. No, it was done. Yeah, 42, 30. So we'll say it's 50 seconds for a single stack. So it's 250 seconds for a full stack. Okay, you ready? So, or for, for five stacks, I mean. All right, let's, let's freeze this again. And let's, uh, let's pop down a, yeah. Okay. 250 seconds. Actually, let's, uh, let's calculate, let's see, how many stacks do we have in here? Because every time the 250, sec 250 seconds happens, we'll lose one item. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, 8 times 5 is 40, so we have 49 stacks of items here. So it's 49 times uh, 64 items. That many cycles of the clock, this times, whoops, 250 seconds. That's how many seconds? 3,600 seconds per hour, 24 hours per day. Oh, this is actually less than the other clock. Nine, nine days because this one was 9.33 days huh all oh, right because 250 se and this has more yeah that makes sense um etho clock with dropper count 9.07 days All right, uh, let me actually get this to reset here, or um, whatever. Uh, just break, oh, well, fine. Uh, and then I need to what, pull all these out. And fill this. Oh, what a cool feature, middle click. And then redstone block goes here, this breaks. Shoot, no, wait, that wasn't it. Darn it, I wanted, okay, I need obsidian first. No, okay. I need this one to be powered. <laughs> okay, I did this wrong. Okay, I think it's like this. And this is powered. Okay, yeah, now any update here. So this is where we provide the initial update and then the TNT goes over here. Oh, I do still have the redstone blocks, yeah. That's, uh, yeah. So, so this one has all the items in it and it's also gonna be powered or by this redstone block. So this will freeze it and it'll get, it'll get uh, butted by, basically this, this one, well, it's not, uh, yeah, it'll get butted by, by this button. Which will start, start the timer. Okay, so this is cool. I feel like this might have some more potential. So, okay, so the idea for the next one here, I'll show you, I'll show you the general idea if, if you were like a little bit confused about what what I meant by co-prime numbers and whatever. Uh, don't need that. So we have a clock here. Uh, I'm gonna need a little more space than this, aren't I? 
We have another clock here, which has a slightly different timing. So every time through, basically, this one's going to catch up by a tick or go faster by one tick. Um, but yeah, this isn't. I'm going to need a little bit more space than this. So let's let's actually make let's just make it a lot smaller for demonstration purposes, just so that I can like I want to wrap my head around this. And we use an observer to get a pulse out of each one. Um, and then we need some sort of like AND gate. I'm going to need even more space than this. Uh, I can do... <laughs> this is actually a little tricky to like... God, I, I hate, I really hate how dispensers and pistons get placed. Alright, let's just make these a lot smaller. So this is four and four, we'll do four and three, and then four and four. So these have slightly different offsets. Uh, we have two observers, we have, uh, okay. So we need to, basically we need an AND gate. We need these pulses to happen at the same time. Um, which is not going to be possible the way we've I've built this. Yeah, I need I need an, I need an AND gate that's going to work for pulses that's really small. Does anyone have any ideas for how to do it? You can use the fact that the comparator only takes two ticks and face two observers into it. And when they line up one after another perfectly, the comparator fires. I can measure when they're one tick apart. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, that, that could work. Like this? Oh yeah, cool. So this is already like, I mean, this isn't like a super long timer, but it's like a lot longer than either of these individual timers. Okay, that's a good one. And in fact, I don't need, uh, I could probably get away with a much longer, like one, two, three, four. So keep in mind, they don't need to be prime. The numbers don't need to be prime. They just need to be co-prime, which is going to happen if they're just like one tick apart from each other. The co-prime means they have no factors in common. Oops. And then it'll take like the product of the two. So. Let's see. Yeah, I'm still having problems with. Okay, I actually need this to be like, oops. Like that. Okay, that'll work. Yeah. Uh, what am I doing? So I think I need to make this one one tick shorter. And then we put a dust here. Hold on. And then a repeater here. Oh, no. The repeater is going to mess up the... Okay. So I think I need... Okay. This is actually not too bad. Um, what I do is I put a block here and a block here. And then I can have... Oh, no. That's not going to work. Because that's the signal time making its way in here. Can the observers go straight into the torch block? 
Uh, I don't think so. Wait, maybe. Yeah, actually, no, they probably can. Yeah, that should work. That should work. Yeah, there we go. So that happened three times in a row because there was like a one tick catch up each time. Oh, this is cool. So basically the n amount of cycles of each of these that it should take is, is like the number of ticks in the longer one times the total um, God, my brain <laughs> times, times the, uh, like amount of time. So like, uh, it says 17 ticks. It should be like 17 times 17 times. And then the number of seconds it takes, which is 17 over four, which is 4.25. So it should be every 72 seconds, except it's actually half of that. I think. Because the observers trigger, it's basically they need to get halfway out of phase because the observers trigger on both. So like, um, oh, where's my mouse? What the hell? Okay. My mouse just like disappeared for a sec. Um, basically, if this turns off at the same time this turns on, then it'll trigger, it'll also trigger the, the torch. So it's actually half of that because of how observers work. Do I need this for a specific project? Uh, yeah, it's the five by five timer challenge. Isn't the stream title? So let's let's actually make sure it's. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I'm gonna actually like measure the the cycle. Make sure that my theory is correct about thirty six point one two five seconds. So it was 34. It's a little weird because it actually triggers three times if they're only one tick apart. But from the first one to the first one should be 36 seconds. So it's 34. So I'm predicting, so I was 1255 and 34 seconds. Next one should happen at 1256 and 40 seconds. No, in 10 seconds. Huh, but it wasn't, it was only it was only 26 seconds. That's weird. I'm um, maybe I miscalculated something. Shouldn't it be, shouldn't there be like a product of something in here? Oh, I guess it is the product of these two in terms of ticks. So it's like another way to write this is 17 times 16 over four divided by two. Oh, that's 34 seconds. Wait, did I miscount and it's actually Thirty-four and not twenty-four. Isn't the torch? Yeah, the torch is an extra tick. That's why this one's seventeen. This one's sixteen. And I'm talking about redstone ticks, not game ticks. There's only ten redstone ticks per second. Okay, so that was fifty-seven twenty-two. 
So we expect the next one at 57.56. Wait, why am I divided by four? Should I be divided by 10? 17 times, whoops. 16 divided by, oh, it's 27.2. Yeah, yeah, that's the one, okay. I don't know, I was like divided by four for some reason. That was weird. I, I don't know why I was dividing by four. Anyway, 27 seconds seems about right, actually. Though, shouldn't it be half that? Because when the clocks get halfway out of phase, they'll also trigger. Okay, 17. I need to actually just time this. Seventeen, fifty-eight, seventeen, twelve, fifty-eight, seventeen. 17. 12, 58, 17. <laughs> is what I'm trying to say. Okay, 44. So that was 27 seconds. That was 27 seconds. I don't really know why it's not. I don't know why it's not triggering on half phases or So like here, here they're halfway apart and that's triggering it. So this is twice as long as I would expect it to be, the, the period. I'm not sure why that is. Maybe it only triggers on halves? Like they're almost synced up again. I think it should trigger that today. Sorry, trigger that. Yeah, it does. So why is... Why is that, uh, why is that? <laughs> why is it like that? Is it because the torch needs more than one? I, I'm just confused why they're getting in phase and out of phase every 27 seconds rather than the full like the full cycle between being in phase being 27 seconds is there a times 2 somewhere i don't know yeah currently design has no way to start it but that's easy i'm not worried about that i'm not at all worried about that oh the torch double right 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 yeah so the actual Phase, the actual period of the clock is twice as long as that. But then we're using half phase. Okay. So this, yeah, this triggers every 17 cycles, every 17 ticks. And this triggers every, or this triggers every 17 ticks, this triggers every 16 ticks. Okay. And so, yeah, okay, I get it. All right. Yeah, I, I forgot that the torch actually doubled the length of the clock. That's a good point. Okay, so then um, somebody was asking, like, if the, uh, all right, so, like, how long can we get if we have two hopper clocks? So it's, um, it's like, kind of depends how, f how much time it takes for a hopper to like actually get put its items into the next thing how many ticks it is i'm not sure let me just like try and measure that real quick i don't know why i did that okay so let's see it's at 50 at 1208 kind of 1209 i don't know how many ticks it is per uh per item
Okay, so it took uh, 20 seconds to empty from 50, so it should be like two and a half per second. So it's seven game ticks, or that, that wouldn't be what I just measured. Well, okay, if I can do 250 items, if the t cycle of 250 items, oops. Okay, this, the cycle of 64 times 64, oops. So the full cycle takes One point two eight sec. What? Hey, thanks for the hundred bits launch pad fun and I don't. I think I missed Gombi Nine's resub. Thanks. Welcome back, Gombi Nine here. Thanks for subbing with Twitch Prime for fourteen months and welcome back, Adrian Kenobi here. Thank you for subbing with Twitch Prime. It's three redstone ticks or six game ticks according to the MC Wiki. Huh. That's not really what I was just measuring. Okay, it's 50 at 47. Four redstone ticks sounds correct. Yeah. Yeah, 2.5 items per second. Okay, yeah. Yeah, that's what I think. That's what I just measured. I was getting 2.5 per second. Okay. So, four redstone ticks. Um, so, I don't know why I keep opening a new instance of calculator. 200, what is it, 64 times five times four. So that's the number of redstone ticks it takes to unload a hopper. And we go back and forth, it's, well, let's, no, let's divide by two. So we get 1280 ticks and we can have 12, wait. Yeah, so, th so if we remove an item, it's like 320, times 319. So th this is like the phase difference between two hoppers with a different number of items by one. Then it's times four game ticks times two. So that's the number of game ticks until they sync up divided by 10 seconds, hours. This is less than a day. Hmm. Hmm, that's not very good, if I did my math right. Let's try it again, see if we get the same answer. 64 items, five stacks, so 320 items in one hopper clock times 319 items in the other hopper clock. How long does it take per item? Well, it takes four game ticks. Oh yeah, and we go back and forth, so there's times two. That's the number of game ticks until they sync up. Sorry, not game ticks, I mean redstone ticks. And that's the number of seconds, yeah, okay, it's the same answer. Less than a day. That's not as good as I thought it was gonna be. Hmm, maybe this isn't the way to go. I'm sure there's some like math nerds in the chat that can like correct me if I'm wrong, but that is also only if I could fit two hopper clocks into a single like area, which actually seems kind of hard. Why is this going? I don't, oh, this is my experimental one where, right, that hopper will eventually empty and then I'll get to like say I told you so to everybody who was like, it's okay. Have we tried plain binary counter? Yeah, that was the first thing. It's not very good. <laughs> so that was the first thing I tried here. Uh, it's a, so there's like a little hopper clock here. Basically an item just goes back and forth, clocks this. And uh, what I haven't tried is doing this method. No, this method to drive a binary clock doesn't make any sense. Wait, yes it does. Oh, actually, maybe it does. No, it doesn't. 
Okay, yeah, it doesn't because it's not infinite. Anyway, so the binary clock um, Maybe it does, hold on. I, I like I convinced myself that you couldn't use this in conjunction with anything else useful, but maybe you can. I need to convince myself again that you can't. So let's say you had this thing, but it only sped out an item when triggered by, no, you need another clock. Never mind, this is not useful, okay. Uh, this is the binary clock. So you have like a piston with an observer and that's gonna trigger this one and that's gonna trigger this one over to here, over to here and over to here. Anyway, this one only lasts 12 seconds. If you had a longer clock, you could get that up a bit. Yeah, the despawn timer triggering the hopper clock um, doesn't make any sense. Because the despawn timer is only going to go every five minutes. Like, you, you only need one clock per thing. Everything else is just going to be a counter. So you want, like, an exponential counter, basically. So if we could do, like... Here's what would be great. And this might actually be viable, because we actually have a lot of extra space here. But So we have a clock, right? Um, let's just... Let me just build, a, like, a really basic clock here. Okay, and then um, I need a comparator. All right, so then what if we had a dropper here? And that was going into a hopper, right? And then we like fill this thing up with whatever. It's great. Um, and then only once this is empty do we like let this flow back into here and we get a redstone signal and feed it into another one of these. That would be awesome. If there was some compact way to do that. So like, I can't like fit it in here, but actually maybe I can. So we like observe this. Stin. Let me try this real quick. I already have observer. And then I need a comparator for when this is empty. And we also trigger Uh, let's put this here. Why is that? Oh, because it's next to this. Uh, okay. <laughs> this isn't... All right. I'm, I'm not doing this right. Um, so this is actually very similar... Now that I think about it, this is actually very similar to the hopper clock where you want like... So let me try, let me try just building what I want to build um, just like on its own. So you have a dropper and a hopper. This is like the same thing as the... Um, as the hopper hopper clock, except it's going to be pulsed instead of automatic. Then you have this, wait, oh wait, I need these to not be against the wall. So you have a dropper here, hopper going into it, sticky piston here, sticky piston here, this thing, this thing, uh, yeah, something like this. Sorry, I'm not reading chat much, but I'm. Yeah, I just. Uh, I wish I. I wish I had like a mod so that like my hot bar was. That actually wouldn't help because anyway. Uh, grab a repeater. And then. Same thing here, but we can just make this tiny. And then, so then we like, 
put items in here. I don't actually want that many items. I don't know why I did that. Just break this. <laughs> I don't know why I did that. I only want like two items, three items. Okay, so we have, we have three items in here. Now we like pulse this with a button. One, two, three. And then the hopper empties out and then it goes back. So if we could chain these together, if we could chain these together, that would like create an exponentially large hopper counter. But like this thing, yeah, there is like a, there is hot bar saving and stuff. It's, but then I have to like remember what's in which hot bar. Maybe that's worth like in trying to invest in. Like I could have blocks in one and like redstone pieces in another. Maybe I should do that. Yeah, that might be worth doing. Now there's no way to make this use a sticky piston. You need like a toggle flip flop because these are both gonna be outputting like most of the time. Like right now, these are both outputting signal. And when they're both outputting signal, you need to like remember the state and the two sticky pistons is what allows you to do that. So, so if I could like chain this into another one of these, that'd be like a huge timer. you would get like, or even with a really short timer, you would have like, well, I guess you'd only have to be able to have up to five stacks, but uh, like, it'd be like five times 64, this number squared times whatever the base timer is. So if you have a one second timer, then that'd be, it'd only be 28 hours. So you need you would need a long timer too. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. And th and it's like I don't think I can fit two of these into a single into a single five by five area. Welcome back, Kids Farm to here. Thanks for something with real money. I almost said with Twitch Prime because that's how most people do it. But no, real money's good too. Thank you. How about trying to dispense more items into the hopper than it can return? Basically, fight the flow. I don't know what that accomplishes. What do you get if you win the challenge? There's, first of all, there's no such thing as winning the challenge. There's only a high score. And second of all, you get nothing. Pride? Sure, I guess. <laughs> sure, I guess. All right, so is it height limited? Yeah, there's rules in the stream title. There's like a link. Check out the bit.ly link. There's a list of rules. And uh, I don't know if I thought of everything though, but I think I closed most loopholes. Yeah, there's supposed to be a roof over this, an obsidian roof. So it's like a literal black box. Yeah, I'll be making a video about this. Use two comparator timers, one tick apart. For what purpose? I don't know. I don't know what you're, I don't know why I would do that. So what's the high score? Currently the high score is over here. Here, 9.33 days. Wait, I had something better than that. I thought, what did I, did I write down how long this was supposed to take? I thought this one took a lot longer than that. So this was, this is the design I built, just built basically. It's the hopper, hopper timer going into a uh, dropper counter. 
Yeah, I don't think 9.33 real days. Yeah, it's real days. But I don't think 9.33 days is like that long. I think I think you can get something like in the years. You have an 11.78 on the Twitter. All right, let's take a look at that. Oh, I see. You're just using the same design, but like with a slightly different. Uh, oh, does this somehow get only a single pulse per? No. I don't think this design works, Logical Geek Boy. I think we, this is something we went over, uh, where you get basically two. The since the dropper that contains the items that's actually getting red, um, since that pulses twice every time. Um, You end up like running out here. I actually have that built over here. I think I have this. This is the exact design you had. You had, I think. And uh, the problem is, this one only pulses once every time, but this pulses twice every time. So this, we actually deplete uh, the resources at this hopper. So like every time this pulses twice, two items drain out of the hopper. This only pulses once, and so only one gets refilled. So this will eventually deplete. Oh, it keeps up. How does it keep up? How do you get two pulses into that one? I don't understand how you would, uh, how it would keep up. You didn't check that hopper? Yeah. Yeah. You got to check that hopper. Cause that's where it's, that's where it starts draining. There's not, there's not enough inflow into that hopper. Oh, interesting. If you only had one block, no, cause it's going to empty. And this is, so the problem with only putting one block on, well, where's that design here? So you're saying like only put one block in here so that it'll only get refilled one block each time. But the problem is what triggers the TNT, which would be right here is this one emptying. So if this one's emptying at, at all, it's going to trigger this observer and it'll trigger the TNT. So it would keep the flow rates the same. And if you had some way of like making, like making sure it only triggered if the pulse was off for long enough, then that would work. But I guess maybe you could do that if you read from a different hop, from a different, uh, yeah, I guess if you like read from this, okay, hold on. Yeah. Yeah. Instead of reading from this one, if we read from a different one, that might actually work. If we just like read from, from this one, we shifted the whole design over a little bit, read from this one, that would work. But then we're losing out on a couple of spots of space and we kind of end up with this anyway. Or not, not that one. Uh, yeah, this one. Like this one already has almost the same number, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. This one actually has more. Right? Wait, this one works, right? There's no button on this one. Oh, there it is right there. I don't know. Why would the other one, why would that one even take longer? It's. This one has fewer hoppers. The extra dropper increases the time. I mean, it doesn't. <laughs> anyway it doesn't double the number of cycles unless you can get this down to a single pulse per it's not going to be one item per cycle I've been over why it's not, not going to be one item per cycle All right, I will look I saw somebody said there was another long longish design on twitter 21.5 days 8 droppers plus 5 hoppers I can't really read this. Let's see. 
Uh, I wish you didn't put glass over it. Um, yeah, I think this has the same problem. Where you're not, where you're going to get, like, all the hoppers. Like, yeah, you're triggering a bunch of hoppers, but they're not going to, they're only going to spit out one item a piece, whereas the, the main, yeah, all these have the same problem. The, you can't have any droppers in the chain. If you have any droppers in the chain, you're going to end up underflowing somewhere. Whoops, I didn't mean to click that. How did I even have that up on my screen? Weird. Okay. Yeah, you can't have any droppers in the chain unless they're getting pulsed twice or the main dropper is only getting pulsed once. You can if they're powered by observers. Only if the observer is reading from that chain of... Hold on, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe maybe all of them are getting powered by observers. By the observer chain. I don't think so though. Oh, I see. Yeah, you're doing something where... Oh, okay, I get it. So those are actually getting pulsed twice. Or maybe they're not. Okay, uh, I'll check out this design. Let me try this design real quick. Thanks for the five bucks farm, you two. Hey, Seth Bling, sorry for interrupting, but I saw your recent design for a binary counter. I was wondering what the advantages are compared to a regular design that uses a repeater facing into a block with a stick of piston underneath. I think it's a little bit smaller. It also is just neat. There's not necessarily, it's not necessarily like strictly better or strictly worse or anything. Um, let's see, how do I do this so that I can actually see the chat and everything at the same time? I can go like this. Okay. So let's, let's, let's try this out. I'll, I'm willing to, I'm willing to look at this now that I kind of see what's going on a little bit better. So you have, cause I'm just not sure how this works. So we, I don't know, it looks like you're using a heavy weighted pressure plate in this one, but I don't think so. This is the 21 day design or whatever. So. Because the heavy weighted pressure plate doesn't, can't see, um, like, uh, items, I don't think. It, it just sees uh, entities. Like, t um, well, let me try it. Let me try it. I just, I don't remember. Oh, it does. Wait, what is the difference between the heavy weighted pressure plate and the light weighted pressure plate? Huh. Anyway, okay, so we have that, and then the main part of the design is that it uses um, this to trigger the. So let's let's see what happens here. Okay. Uh oh, right. So let's um. Whatever. I guess I can put this button on the outside, huh? Okay. Huh. Oh, the delay. So the delay here prevents this. Uh, basically, what this delay does is it causes this to be pressed down so that when this pulses off the second time, this will. Uh, this will um, already be powered. And so it's not going to spit out twice, right? Something like that. But yeah, it's like it's powered by this. Oh, it's like get powered by this so that when the item gets spit out, this one isn't doesn't cause it to trigger again, and then this one also doesn't. Yeah, okay, this is clever. It's like desyncing two different pulses off. I like it. Yeah, all right, that's clever. Sharp Coon G one four one two, very nice. And then, yeah, and then what you're doing is, like, using that signal. Let's see. 
So then you use that signal that pulses twice to use uh, a bunch of droppers, right? So let's see, that one, that one, and then there's also redstone dust here. Yeah, okay, this is clever. Dropper, I'm not sure, let's see. I think there's supposed to be another block. Oh, that's not the right place, it goes, uh, it's here. And then this is actually gonna end up being a dropper, I think. It's like this, right? Yeah, let's see, it's, uh, yeah, yeah, that's correct, okay. And then dropper, whoops. So these are like, these all get to be droppers because of, not this one though, right? Yeah, this one's a hopper, yeah. So. All right, I like it, it's clever. So that one's a hopper because it's not gonna get powered, but like, oh, and then I think this needs to go like this way. And then this way. So this redstone dust is gonna is gonna pulse. Actually, they don't even need to be triggered twice, do they? They just need to be triggered once. Anyway, but they will get triggered twice. Um, but they just need to receive some sort of redstone pulse. And then from here, it's gonna be a hopper chain. Um, what else? So I think this. So it's gonna be like. So what else is getting powered? This one's getting powered both here and here. I think that's it. I might be able to do something where I like have a repeater, but I don't know that it's worth it. Because for every, like you need two additional droppers every time you, uh, so, it's like, so it's like that, 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 that. I think it's like this. And the chain starts here. So let's let's try it. Um, so this has 62. Oh, it's gonna take like a few before it like fills up all the droppers. So some of these are gonna get triggered twice, but it doesn't really matter. So, okay, so at this point uh, we sh oh. Okay, well, it says 62 right now, and 63, yep. So this is getting, I think this is good. It's like netting one item a piece, but um, yeah, okay. So let's calculate this before we fill everything up. I just wanna like, oh, right, wait, 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 wait. We didn't, hold on. I didn't actually get the uh, comparator output. Oh, this isn't so this isn't actually right. I need a comparator output. Um, so how is this one doing it? Oh, huh. Wait, how? So it's like so this design uses a comparator. Yeah, that seems like it's the way to go. Comparator right here and an observer watching that one. And then I need to actually redo these oh god which direction is everything facing <laughs> this is facing in here i'm pretty sure yeah okay and then this is facing here here okay yeah so it goes like over here and then around and down here and then we actually read from this hopper so we don't actually get to count this stack or this this set of nine stacks But uh, okay, so let's count this number of stacks. So it's, and we also get to double because uh, we're only gonna pull a single item per per go. So it's um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So there's eight droppers and one, two, three, four, five, five hoppers. So eight times nine is 72 stacks plus 25 stacks. So 72 plus 25 is 97. So it's 97 stacks times 64 items per stack times five minutes per stack, 31,000 second minutes. 
yeah, wow, 31,000 minutes, 517 hours, 21.55 days is how I read this. Cool. Yeah. I like it. That's a really nice design. Kudos to you, Sharp Goon G, Sharp Coon G1412. Thank you. Uh, single pulse uh, item despawn. And this is 21.55 days. It's clever. Yeah, there might be a way, like, if you used a repeater through some of these, you could might be able to get a signal through here and add a, add a couple more droppers, but at the cost of removing a, a hopper. Like, could I put a repeater? Hmm. No, I don't know. Anyway, let's um, let's fill one of these with uh, with items. Eat redstone dust. Oh, right. Let's fill. Uh, oh shoot! I shouldn't use redstone dust. <laughs> Uh, let's break this. Yeah, I, I, I have to use the same. Oops. Ah. No. Yeah. <sighs> I need a trash thing right here. Why is there no trash? Okay. No, stop! Ugh. Okay. I can't even clear out my inventory from the screen. I'm mad. Okay. Alright, we're using redstone blocks. Oh, I need also do need some alright, so let's alright, I need to do this. Okay. So now it's it's stopped. The clock is stopped right now. So let's um, let's get a full. So it's con it's control middle click gets me a dropper with MBT, and control middle click gets me a hopper with MBT. So now, how do I do this? It's facing me, right? Oh, that's that was an observer. I didn't mean to do that. I meant to. Yeah, sorry. That's that was the observer. Okay. Wait, no, it wasn't. That's the observer. I just, okay. <sighs> this goes over here. And it faces here. Okay, great. And this hopper feeds into it. Uh, then what? It goes, it snakes like this, right? Wait. Yeah, it has to snake like this. Yeah, okay. So this hopper feeds into that. This hopper feeds into that. This dropper feeds into that. Dropper, oops. Feeds in. Dropper feeds in. Hopper feeds in. Dropper, 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 dropper. Okay. All right, I think I did it. <laughs> Whew, that was hard. You optimized this design and got 27.555 days. All right, I need to add a TNT here. The last dropper limits the other items, so you think you can count? No, no, no. If there's any slots available, you can't count it. Because, okay, so if this dropper, um, basically what's the only thing stopping this hopper from, uh, from emptying is the fact that this dropper is full. So if this dropper, if this hopper had a single item left, and then you dispense an item, this dropper will be full again once this hopper puts the item in here, but then this hopper will now be empty and it'll, so, so when this one's still full, this one will be empty in the TNT will trigger. So you can't, you don't get to count this one. Here's an item down here. Uh, 
All right, what's this? What do we got? Somebody tweeted me a 27 day design. This is 21 days, we already beat 21. What did you calculate? You calculated 21 point, oh yeah, we have the same number. Uh, yeah, you're not allowed to have like hopper mine carts or anything like that um, as part of the build, but they can get like dispensed by a dispenser. I'm not sure it's really useful though. Yeah, there's, I mean, you can have a hopper mine cart, but yeah, there's, there's no way to get the items out of it. It's never gonna be like on top of another block or anything. If you clip it into another block, maybe you could, but you, like you also can't pre-fill the hopper mine cart. So there's no items. There's really, it's just not, I don't think there's gonna be any way to like use it very well. Maybe there's some way where you can like dispense nine hopper mine carts onto a single tile and then use some like infinite block duping trip trick to like get fill those with items. And then it's 25.55 days. Um I don't think I want to iterate on this any further right now, this this design. Um, like, I'm kind of okay, because it, it's the single pulse thing is kind of the ma major improvement there. Um, and I can, I, like, I'm going to make a video about this. I'm going to mention, like, that it's some other people in the chat said it was possible. Oh, yeah, I need to write down the name. Okay. Uh... But um, I, I don't want to keep fiddling around with this because you can optimize it more and more, but I think we should be looking for something that's like an order of magnitude longer, right? There's probably something that'll last a lot longer than this. Uh, so that was by uh, Sharpcoon. G1412. Oh, Sharp Kung, I guess. That's probably what it is. I'm really bad at pronouncing internet people's names. You've been trying to get an item despawn clock to drive a hopper counter. Actually, no, uh, so that doesn't, that doesn't help. Yeah, that wouldn't help because the item despawn clock is gonna run out of items eventually. So the hopper counter will keep passing items back and forth, but the clock that's driving it's going to run out. So it doesn't matter if you can get it to drive a, a dropper counter. If you had a five minute clock, a small five minute clock that, uh... yeah, I'm, I'm not saying, I'm saying the, the clock, the item de despawn clock will eventually run out of gas. You, you need, if you want a, a really long counter, you need it to have an infinite input or, yeah, basically you need it to have an infinite input. Yeah, Impenum, I'm, I'm sure, I'm sure this is something you could dig your teeth into. So what else can we try? I want something that lasts like at least a few months, like 21 days. That's not even like, I don't know, it's just not enough. Enough. Welcome back, Nordiago here. Thanks for resubbing for four years and a month. Wow. <laughs> That's super duper long. Let's see. So so one of the rules is there's no no major random or like no significant randomness allowed. So for instance, you might try and do something where like I don't even know why I'm doing this. Like you have two dispensers full of chicken eggs and like, or you have actually, you probably need, would need a chicken egg like factory to make sure it's infinite. But then like you have, you fill two dispensers and you like have them both dispense an egg and only if both of them trigger, like anyway, you can't do it based on randomness. It needs, it needs to, 
be based on deterministic mechanisms up to a certain degree. Like over here, this one is actually not technically free of randomness because the amount, like the amount of vertical velocity it gets when it comes out of the dropper, is is random and it's variable. And so like it takes a random number of ticks to actually hit the pressure plate, but that's negligible compared to the amount of time it spends on the pressure plate. So that's what I mean by significant randomness. It shouldn't vary. The timer shouldn't vary by more than like a couple percent in terms of how long it takes to finish. Can you use mushroom spread? No, that'd be randomness. Ice melting is also random. Anything that relies on random tick speed is, is not going to be allowed. There's some other sor sources of randomness that also aren't allowed, like dropper item selection. Like if you put a bunch of different items in here, uh, it'll spit out a random one every time you provide a pulse. You can't rely on that to the randomness involved there. I wonder if there's something where you can like have four hoppers in a loop this one's empty let's let's um let me power this just like as a smaller clock I have an idea for a smaller clock um I need that comparator god I really need to like do something with my toolbars but let's just like make sure that none of them are powered right now so we put like a bunch of items in here. Let's actually not do that for now, like all those items. And then uh, like a pickaxe. And then we read the like comparator output of this and require it to like, to be a certain threshold. I don't have a piston. I just want a piston, okay. Let's, what can I replace? TNT, I don't need TNT. So like now when I remove these, oh, uh, hmm, this doesn't work because it's going to keep filling up. Anyway, I like have it so that it'll, cause, cause these do actually go in order. If you had it so that like the, um, what about, uh, what about if you did this? What? Uh, oh. Maybe that works actually. No, it does not work. Yeah, and uh, there's other ways to read this. I just I'm just doing this as a proof of concept for a really small clock. This isn't that small, but it's like it would if it worked, it would be uh, pretty good. You guys are telling you to mess with T flip flops. Um, yeah, so that's basically what we did with a binary counter. So I, I, d I did a video the other day on, a, on like how to use observers and pistons as binary counters. So this is a bunch of T flip flops essentially, but, um, you only get a factor of two out of that. And as opposed to like using a dropper counter, you can get a factor of like several hundred and it's a lot more compact. Yeah, we, we tried playing around with two clocks that are slightly off and synchronized after a long time, but uh, it didn't seem like it was actually going to get us as far as we needed. And also it's hard to fit two really long clocks into a small space. Like, the best long clock that, that I've found so far is over... Wait, where is it? Do not... Oh, this one. No. Yeah, this one. So this is a hopper clock. Uh, basically, the items go back and forth, but it's like it uses up all like everything. All of this is part of the hopper clock. It takes up over half of the space available. El Mango had a concept where items were put into a chest a little slower than they were taken out, and then the chest empty chest triggered it. That sounds like we first of all, we can't since we only have one 
vertical block one block of height we can't actually take that inside of a chest yeah there's not really going to be any way to do that we could do it with like hoppers and like pulses to droppers feeding the hopper or something but i don't know that that's going to get us very far Can you use two hopper clocks that have different radius with hoppers and only if the two... I mean, the problem is fitting two hopper clocks into a single, into the 5x5 five five area. I, I don't know how to do it. And then you also have to, like, read the output of both and compare them and, like, do an AND, and gate. And we, we came up with a small way to do that, which is to have the two observers facing a block with a torch on it. And that's what, that's what this one is. So this one is two clocks. I mean, they're, like, really basic clocks, but, like... They line up every 27 seconds and uh, and trigger this. So this is like the general basis, but like you need a clock that's small. You need like two clocks that are like about this big, two by four. And I don't know how to make a make two clocks that small. Yeah, so, okay, so Gen Pi Mech, what you've actually suggested might be viable if you, like, kept throwing eggs until a chicken spawned, because, like, I actually know it wouldn't, because there is actually a lot of randomness in terms of how long, or, like, how many throws you have to do in order to get a chicken. If it, like, always took the same number of throws, no, yeah, you can't do anything with that. Can you do anything with a double chest? I mean, there's it's hard to use a chest at all because you can't really take items out of a chest in a one block high space. How slow can a minecart roll? <laughs> I don't think we're going to be able to make it roll very slowly in a one block high space. Hmm. Yeah, is there any way to do this where you have like... I don't think there is. The, this thing that I want to do here. Yeah, the problem troll it is isn't that the time that it takes to spawn a chicken, it's that how many eggs it takes to spawn a chicken varies. And so like how many chicken cycles you get is gonna vary. If that's the limiting factor. If the limiting factor is just growing the chicken and you have infinite eggs, that's okay. Like if you can find an egg duper and you're just using that as the like the clock, then that's fine. Rail duping. Can you do rail duping in a one block high space? I actually have no idea how that works. A lot of those things take up multiple you know, layers. Real duping needs too high. Yeah, okay, that's kind of what I thought. Yeah. Hmm. So, like, a smaller clock would be really helpful. A smaller clock that still takes a really long time. Um, and is resettable. And then also a smaller, like, counter. So, what, I designed a counter over here. So, this is, like... Basically the same thing as a hopper hopper clock, um, which is the hopper, yeah, this is which is the basis of like this one, the hopper hopper clock. So this is the exact same design that I've done over here. It's just like a hopper dropper clock. And it's not actually a clock, it's a counter. So uh, every, like every time this pulses for five stacks worth of items, it'll just automatic, automatically refill itself. So if you have a clock going into this, like if we could get a long clock going into this, we could multiply. Yeah, I don't know, we can get a lot of pulses. Like if we could fit a hopper clock into like into this area here, have it have it feed into this and then have the output of this feed into another like 
single dropper counter like we do for for this one over here in the end we have this like counter that like once this just dispenses all of its items that's the end but but we can't really fit it in here but if we could it would be like another like two orders of magnitude bigger right it'd be um you'd have like five stacks of 64 times the like 250 second clock that's the hopper ho hopper clock is and then times another five times or whoops it would be sorry five times 64 is the counter hopper hopper clock is 250 seconds times nine stacks of 64 items in the dropper it'd be 46 million seconds right that that, that many hours it'd be oh, it'd be a year and a half so if we could do that if we could fit all of that into one into this area it'd be over a year but um i don't know how to do that i don't know how to fit all that There might be a way. In fact, I'm like I wouldn't be surprised if there is a way. You can remove the sticky piston on the driver's head. You it, you need the two sticky pistons. I went over that earlier in the stream. Why you need the two sticky pistons? But yeah, you can't just remove one of the sticky pistons. They're both necessary. Yeah, something with observers probably. I agree. Is it allowed to use a lever to activate instead of a button? Nope. It has to be a button. Glitched portals. Well, you can't fit a portal. Like, this has to be buildable in survival mode. You can't fit a portal in here. Unless there is a way to actually... Okay, unless you're saying glitched portals is, like, possible in survival mode and, like, you can have one block of portal in here or something. In which case, I need to ban that in the rules because that's too complicated. Oh, okay. Let me add that to the rules then. I didn't realize that that was possible. Yeah, you can't use daylight sensors because one of the rules is that there has to be an obsidian roof over the whole thing. Any other ideas or designs that might shrink like a counter? Like a repeatable counter with a shrunken design? Is there some way to do that? Like, um, you could have like, so you kind of need a dropper to have like, there's like something to have a pulse input that counts and then like you need the items to return to the hopper after it's empty i think the clock is the most necessary part the clock and the counter are both important and any counters you can add in between are also important the counter being something that counts to a certain number then overflows and resets and the overflow lets you trigger something else Lava flow is very slow. Uh, okay, let's play around with lava a little bit. I, I'm, I'm okay with that one. So you need like lava, piston, uh, what, an observer? I don't even know. I, like to, to detect it, you kind of need an, an observer, right? Maybe I'll do it like... Uh, I'm not even sure. I guess I could do it like, uh, whatever. Let's just try this real quick. 
Whoops. Oh, this is not what I want. <laughs> uh, okay. So I want what? Oh, man. Okay. If you could have more height cobwebs, it could be interesting. Yeah. Oh, there's a lot of things that would like be pretty broken with more height. But also one of the reasons I chose to have a flat area is just so you can see the whole thing like with a screenshot. I guess you can't see the inventory of the blocks, but um, let's see. So I want this, this. I need an observer like here maybe. Yeah, this will work. Except no, that doesn't work. Uh, uh, what can I? Sure, another observer. Just no, because that's gonna. Okay, I'm just gonna try and build something that like works for a sec. Oops. No. <sighs> Didn't. Okay. So then I like do that, right? Oh. No, I need it to be like facing this way, I guess. <laughs> uh, block, redstone dust. Just, I just want something that works. So, so that does kind of work. It, this one takes, this design takes up a lot of space. I'm sure there's a much tidier way to do this. I don't think it's gonna end up being any better than just like a redstone clock to be honest it doesn't take that long like you want something that takes minutes not something that takes a few seconds how about dropping an item on a wooden pressure plate and letting it naturally despawn that's what we have over here that's what uh, that's what these designs this design also yeah that was, we spent a while on that already. Sliding items across soul sand in a water stream. Again, I don't think that's going to be super slow. And you, can, you actually can't do that because this has to have an obsidian floor. Watermelon growth is random. You can't use randomness. The current top duration uh, that I've built here is 21.5. It's designed by Sharp Kung 1412. Somebody else said they had like a 25 day design lava spread is random tick no it's 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 uh it's just tick based it's not random tick speed based at all like if you turn uh, actually i think like i think my random tick speed is 0 yeah so nothing based on random tick speed is going to trigger in my world right now How many etho hopper clocks can you fit in a five by five? So far, only one. This is the best. This is the like co most compact I've managed to make it. Well, I'm like ignoring these two blocks, but there's probably a more compact. Maybe we should work on that. Is like making that more compact. Like maybe there is a like. Hold on. Yeah, let's try it. Let's try using. Let's try using some observers and seeing if we can get some like toggle behavior out of them. So. I'm just gonna do it off to the side actually. So we have like hoppers facing each other. Man. And a comparator coming out of this one. And a comparator coming out of this one. We're gonna need at least one sticky piston for sure. Um God, it's so little space. Maybe actually, yeah, so maybe this does actually go, ah, uh, man, like you already have four blocks wide here and you need to read the output of both comparators. You don't need to read the output technically. What about, um, I have an idea actually. It's like a slightly different profile, but like, what if we, what if we did something like this? 
Had sticky pistons. So this will like toggle it. It's a it's a it's just a different shape. It's not a better shape. It's actually probably worse, but uh oh. Uh I need these to be farther out. Oh, this is huge. <laughs> I just want to see if this works. I don't think it does, but Like the redstone block here and here. Oh, that's gonna. I I need a repeater. Rather than a dust. And I need it to go like that. So. Uh no, this isn't gonna work. Cause I need them both to trigger both. Yeah, I don't know. I don't really know what I'm thinking here. Okay, so that's that's not it. That was not the design. I don't think that's close even. Lava in a furnace. Ooh, okay. Lava in a furnace isn't bad. The only problem is it's going to be hard to reload the furnace. Can we, what can we do? Let's just like, I, I need to refresh myself on what's possible with lava and a furnace. Um, there's also the fact you can't stack lava buckets. I don't think there's gonna be a very good way to do that. Well, let's just see what it looks like real quick. We have a furnace, we have a hopper, we have what's going to go on top. We need something to burn, right? Yeah, I don't think it's going to work. Like, yeah, you, you, you can't actually fill in all, all three slots. Yeah. Yeah, coal blocks do stack. That's a good point. But, again, we, like... I guess the timer could just be literally, like, is there a way to have the timer just be a stack of coal blocks and that's it? Like, how long does that last? Like, it's just going to be a one-time thing. But no, like, you also, like, you're not going to have, you need something to cook and it's all going to get, like, full and then it's not going to keep cooking. So, yeah, the big problem is you need needing two comparators. What about, like... Okay, there is something else you could do, which is, like, you toggle the flip-flop based on, like, the signal strength of this. So, like, when it's full, you get one signal strength, and when it's empty, you get another. So, like, so you, you do, like, this. Um, like sticky piston here, sticky piston here, and uh, <laughs> geez, I don't even. Okay, there's no way to like get the signal here. Is oh, I do it like this, right? So you would need it to be full before this will. Let's put this. Here, no, this goes here. And that'll trigger it, and then, right, and then you would also need, like, here. This is a proof of concept, but, and so it's gonna be huge, but. I think this works. Uh, what? Why is this powered right now? Oh wait, no, this needs to be toggled. I think. Uh, 
Okay. Okay, I've done something wrong here. Oh man, I need to go to the bathroom. I'll be right back. Uh, so what? Right down here. I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing here. <laughs> I don't think it's right. Ugh. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know of a way to make a smaller clock than this. Daylight sensors aren't banned, but the thing is supposed to have a ceiling, so they wouldn't work. Redstone ore. Redstone ore uses random tick speed to stop shining. So the Crow Prime hopper clock idea doesn't work because we can't actually fit two hopper clocks in the same area, like in the same, yeah. Yeah, we've already done one using, a couple using uh, item despawn time. Yeah, I think it's gonna be hard to beat that because that's, Man, yeah, the item despawn time is a pretty good one. It's like, yeah, there's there's got to be a way though. I don't know. I, I I feel very strongly that someone will make one that lasts longer than a year. Even if it's not me, and it's probably not going to be me. <laughs> Maybe though, or us, I guess. Yeah, so we've done some binary counting. Binary counters are just pretty inefficient compared to like a dropper. Uh, maybe, hold on, maybe we can use binary counting in this design. So currently we're just taking the out, so this is a hopper hopper clock, right? It takes about four minutes. Currently we're just taking the pulse and putting it straight into this. Um, I think once we have about five hoppers, it's worth adding a binary clock. 
because that only takes up four blocks of space. So we can like double it. So instead of having instead of having nine things feeding in, we'd have or but these are only half of this. So instead of having like 29 stacks or sorry, we would have 29 stacks times two instead of 64. No, what's 49 stacks. So it'd be 60 stacks instead of 29 stacks. Yeah, so we might actually make this a little bit longer by doing that, but I don't think it's worth it for this. It's not gonna it's not gonna get us over twenty five days or twenty two days or whatever. The button Oh. Yeah, I guess the button and the TNT can be on the roof or the floor. I guess I don't see why not. Yeah, combining a dispenser clock with a hover clock would be great, especially if there's room for another like dispenser. So like a dispenser, okay, what I mean is if you combine a, dis a hopper hopper clock with a hopper dispenser counter or hopper dropper counter and combine that with a dropper counter, so one that just drops its items on the ground, you can get you can get like years. You can get over a year. But uh, it's just a matter of fitting those all into one one area. Aero D spine on a pressure plate. How was I gonna Oh yeah, S somebody said that they had a really long design if you could put the button on the roof or the floor. Let me add that to the rules because that's a that's a good point that I didn't really think about, but <sighs> actually should I allow it on the roof or the floors? Because the thing is I want it to be like I'm actually gonna say no. I want it to be like all visible from like one spot without the ceiling being there. And if you have to put the button on the ceiling, it's kind of interferes with that. The point of this is to be a two dimensional thing. So let's say no, I'm actually gonna say no. So let me add that rule specifically in there. So it now it says, on the outside of the obsidian box, horizontally level with the 5x5x1 five by five by building area, there should be one button and one TNT and nothing else. And nothing else outside the box in any direction. I don't know where it is. Yeah, sorry. I want this. I want this to be something you can just share a screenshot of. The, th the thing is, it's already kind of not that because you can have items inside of these. Uh... Oh, I didn't actually fill these. Uh... Or I filled, I guess I missed one. Uh, I, don't even, I don't know which direction it's facing. <laughs> uh, okay, that's okay, I can just do this. Oh, it's even emptying into, oh, this one, okay. Okay. All better. Okay. I guess maybe the challenge should have been without using any inventory, any blocks with inventories. I don't know. I'm just going to leave it as, as is though, because inventories make the clocks last a lot longer. Like allowing the button on the top and bottom, it's not obvious to me that that's like going to make it last a lot longer. There's probably a design equivalent to whatever you're thinking of, where the button's on the outside and the TNT's on the outside. I 
Hopper clock that only activates when an item despawns. Yeah, it's not really going to be. I, I went over earlier in the stream why item despawn is kind of incompatible with all, all all other components, both clocks and counters. Top or bottom would allow convergence in the center for phase matching designs. Yeah. I don't know what you mean by do ticks have to be consistent? Do you mean like the exact same number of ticks every time? Like, it doesn't take the exact same number of ticks for an item to land on this weighted pressure plate every time, but uh, it's close enough that... Yeah, you're not allowed to use significant randomness. So, no randomness of an arrow hitting or not hitting a button. No, that's not allowed. Um, hmm. So I, yeah, I already built a etho, etho dropper hopper clock uh, counter here. Like, I put like there's three items in here, so I push this three times. One, two, three, and then this turns off for a second, turns on, and then it refills back to three. So every three, every three button presses, this this pulses. So I've already done that. It's the exact same design as the hopper hopper clock, by the way. But uh, you just can't fit anything else much in here with this. Um, I guess... Um, well... Maybe that's not true. And the other thing that we haven't tried is having more hoppers. So like if I had the dispenser facing this way, hopper, hopper. We could make it longer. I don't know that that's that helpful. Um, hmm. Yeah, chicken farms aren't really going to work because they, uh... oh, to sustain the item despawn, I see what you're saying. Um, it's, I think that's going to add too much randomness in. I, but yeah, you wouldn't have any way of picking up the eggs from the ground. You can't really make a farm, a chicken egg farm in a one high area. Or maybe you could with hoppers, but no, you wouldn't have any way of unloading the hoppers. The etho clock controlling a dispenser or dropper that feeds items into the air is already how we do this one. That's what this one is. And then once this runs out, and it has all these hoppers feeding it, but once this one runs out, then it triggers. You can't, you can't put a baby cow in there. Like, there's no way to spawn a cow in survival Minecraft. Like, and there's not, you're not allowed to put entities in the area. Uh, can you dupe item? Can you dupe carpets? Uh, can you dupe carpets without, uh, in like a one one block tall area? I don't know how. I, I don't think you can. Like, I think it's like rails. I don't think you can, but. Yeah, all item du duping needs too tall. And you can't use item growth or, like, plant growth. Not even that you could grow any plants in a one block tall area. Huh. Yeah, I'm kind of running out of ideas here. Unless we can find some way to make the the like ether clock smaller but i think people have been trying for a long time to do that 
Yeah, you can't put the button on the bottom either, no. Yeah, mushrooms are random. That's not allowed. Yeah, brewing stands and furnaces are you can't really do either because there's no way to load or unload them. The chicken is placed in the same block as the hopper. Uh, that might work. So like, all right, let's, let's, I'll try this out real quick. So you have like a hopper pointed, uh, let's just point it off to the side real quick. Actually, here. so we have two, so we have a pair of hoppers. I need a dispenser. block here. Um, I'm not sure where the chickens are going to land. What's this? Turtle egg. Interesting. Why is that on a different spot? All right. So let's say when the clock, when the thing starts, we just like spit out a bunch of eggs. I guess I need to put a ceiling on this too. So the question is, will will the chicken, will the um, hopper pick up the eggs? I don't know the answer. I don't. Th oh, that's the egg that the turtle creates. I see. So this would be okay because, like, if you're just using this to fill up something. My random tick speed is set to zero. Yeah, so that's... I don't think the random tick speed controls anything here. This has zero... What? This has a chance to make zero chickens. Um, it's negligible enough that I think I would allow this. You're, you're technically right, but like the odds are astronomically small. It's like, what, seven eighths to the uh, 16 times nine is 96. Is that right? 16 times nine, 16 times nine. I don't think it's 96. No, it's like 100 something. Anyway. It, it's like a really, really small chance. And it's one it's one in eight per egg, I think, right? It's not one in 16. It's like one in a billion, something like that. Anyway, it's a really small chance to not happen. So I, I, I think we would consider it okay. Um, you, you, you just need enough chickens that you get like one egg every five minutes also. So that might be more than one chicken. I'm not sure what the egg-laying egg -laying frequency is. But then you would like feed these into a hopper or feed these into a dropper and the dropper would be part of one of those clocks. And then you would use that to feed into a um, just dropper counter. In fact, this is small enough that you might even be able to feed it into, well, I was going to say feed it into another etho dropper, uh, hopper dropper clock, sorry, hopper dropper counter, and then feed that into a dropper counter, and that would be a really long clock. I don't think you're going to be able to fit all of that, though. Dispenser shearing sheep. There, I think that's in 1.14, and this is for, this is this challenge for 1.13. So you would need at least two chickens to get an egg often enough. And then you also have the problem. There's a, there's like kind of another problem, which is like you need to trigger the dropper once it gets an egg. I guess you would just start off the dropper with a few items in it. 
and then use this to refill it. So you, you would start it off with uh, like full of eggs. And then, yeah, so it would just go from there. But yeah, you also need to trigger this a bunch of times. So you need, this needs to have like a clock pointed at it. Some kind of clock. Um, I don't think that's that hard because you can do something like, or no, wait, that doesn't work. Uh, or you can do like an observer, observer clock or something. Oops. Uh, so you do like, basically you would, you do it like, uh, God, I hate trying to place observers. It's just the worst. I hate, I really hate that method of, I don't know why they added a new block with, I guess it's not that new, but where it's placed that way. Anyway, you push this into place and then that's a clock. So that's pretty small. And then maybe you can fit an ether clock into here and I don't know. I think there's some, like I don't think you need this block or this block in here. Oh, you do. Okay. Well, today I learned. So if I summon item, <laughs> yeah, I need like, I don't even know what, I don't know what the command would be. I guess I just need to actually try it and uh, so it'd be like city and block here, here. Let's let's just like make sure this works. Um so oops. So sorry. So it's I'm going to just leave this going. And wait for them to grow. I mean, we'll do other things, but we'll wait for them to grow up and see if any eggs make their way in here. Uh, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna actually, f it might matter. So I'm gonna fill the rest of this with some uh, obsidian because I don't know. Like it might be that the egg like pops up and out. I don't think so because I think if it did that, it was gonna, it would go in the hopper. Yeah, I, this is just a proof of concept. I'm not. Okay, that's gonna be annoying. Anyway, so we've got a bunch of baby chickens in there and they're not suffocating, so that's good. Yeah, they're, they are inside that hopper. The hopper is definitely not like a, a full block that suffocates you, right? Because it's, I mean, just think about what a hopper is if you were inside of it. You wouldn't you wouldn't suffocate if your if your head was inside of a hopper, right? Because there's a little bowl. Oh, they might suffocate when they become a chicken. I don't think so. Chickens are less than a block tall. Yeah, I don't I don't I don't think they would. In one dot thirteen, they have an actual block model. But I don't think the block model has anything to do with suffocation. I think like blocks that suffocate you take up the entire like suffocate you for that entire block if your head's in that block. Maybe I'm wrong. Could be wrong. Yeah, they do have a they do have an actual block model. You can kind of see like if I hover over it or not. It uh like get the wireframe around it or, or whatever. If they were in the hopper, they wouldn't be standing on the obsidian. Yeah, I I know they're not in the hopper. I'm just saying that their heads like Anyway, it's not a, it's I don't think it can suffocate you. Here. Here, let's just try it with a chicken, because I can summon a chicken very easily. Hopper. Oops. Summon chicken to live at least. I guess I should just use this, huh? 
Oh, uh. Ah, oh, good. Okay. So we'll test two things. We'll test, like, this will test the full thing, but this will be a faster test. Oh, I could probably merge, like, uh, data merge type equals chicken sort equals nearest limit equals one. Uh, let's see. What's its, um, where's the countdown timer for laying an egg? Egg lay time. <laughs> so we laid an egg. Yeah, it should be coming out here and it's not. You know what? This dropper was probably not actually pointed to the side, was it? Okay, well... Where's the eggs? Oh, there's uh, so there's eggs on the ground. There's two eggs on the ground here. There's probably actually more than two. Nine, yeah. So they don't actually go into the hoppers. Science. This is a, this doesn't work. I'm kind of relieved this doesn't work because it was like on sketchy ground anyway because of that like chicken egg thing. There is some kind of randomness involved there. I'm still gonna let this experiment finish because, like, maybe there's something different about different about how chickens grow into adults. I should have put glass on top so I could actually see. I'm gonna do that now, actually. I should be able to see their heads peeking through once they grow up, I think. I want to... Oh, here. Uh. Yeah. Huh, okay, so they're kind of like stuck in this little tiny space here. That's interesting. Yeah, it might be a slightly different, like, given how they spawned. I think, I don't think chickens rely on random tick speed. Like, the random tick speed is just for the random ticks, which are for blocks. Like, the, the point is that, like, a random tick is every, t every tick, n blocks per chunk get random ticked, and that causes, like, growth and redstone ore to stop shining and stuff like that. Yo, hey, Selden123, thanks for the six dollars. Hi, Minecraft. Hi, Minecraft is the best game ever, and hello, and Cheerio. No Cheerio. Okay. All right. Yeah, thank you. Minecraft is pretty great. I'm kind of rediscovering it. All right, so that's probably not going to work, which is which is kind of good. I'm kind of glad about that. Okay. Any other any other ideas? Yeah. If there was some other like infinite source of items, then that would allow us to do cool things with uh, despawn clocks. But I don't know that there's other source, other non-random infinite sources of items.
Is there a reason behind this challenge? Fun. Fun is the reason. You know what I should do is eat. The question is, should I end the stream and eat or not? I feel like we're kind of uh, at, a, at an impasse and have been for the last hour or so. I guess we experimented with this. This is good to like experiment. Yeah, so rail duping, carpet duping, I've been told, require two blocks of height, and we don't have room for that. Well, I'm only going to eat on stream if, like, I think there's, if I think the stream is going to keep going. But, like, as it is, I'm not sure what to do. I'm not sure, like, what to try. I honestly, I kind of thought that somebody would come on the stream and, or come on in the chat and, like, tell me this is stupid and there's a much more compact way to do it. But, uh,. It's not seeming like that. Uh, I just had an idea. I want to try something real quick. I don't think this is going to wor work, but... Yeah, okay. Let me, let me just try this real quick and just see what happens. It's the way to, like, maybe compact it a little bit more. It's like, what if I... What if I did the God, I hate placing these. Like this. Like do, what does this do? What does this do when you when you do it like this? I don't, I don't think again, I don't think this is going to be at all good, but then redstone block. In order for this to work, it would this would have to like pulse in order to block this. Maybe there is a, like an amount of timing where that would work, but not in any like lower amount of space. Cuz you could actually fit two of these into like into a, a 5x5 area. Like this takes up slightly less than half of the area. Non-sticky pistons aren't going to work, I'm pretty sure. Wait, maybe. Actually, maybe. Maybe there is a way to make that work. Um, yeah, yeah. Let me let me let me just check that out. If they're both based on observers, oops. Okay, is is there any way to make this work at all? Like like what if I did this? What would happen? Uh and by that I mean wait. No. Uh I need observers. I still need observers. So, hold on. What if I did I don't know. What if I did it like this? Uh, this. Okay, what what does this do right now? Now I need I need the signals to be flipped. When this empties out, I want to push this one. I don't think there's going to be a way to do that. Oh, is that... Oh, this is a sticky piston. I meant for this to be a regular piston. Maybe I do want a sticky piston here and a sticky piston here. So it'll just, like, pull it when it's ready. Huh. Wait, maybe this... No, there's no way this works. Is there? No. Okay. <laughs> okay. Good. 
I'm I don't I'm just trying to figure out a way to make this work with with observers. Like maybe maybe there's a way to make it smaller with observers just because of they allow you to do. Oh, what if what if I did like I mean this isn't going to work either, but This is going to pulse back and forth here. Hmm. Mario Maker 2, really? I don't know, I like, what's the justification for making Mario Maker 2 versus just updating Mario Maker? I guess Mario Maker was for Wii U and they want to make one for Switch. Eh, okay. I have a hard time seeing that being like super interesting. I think maybe a lot of people got it out of their system with the first one, but uh, oh, if it's a lot different then, then maybe, yeah. They added slopes. <laughs> okay. Yeah, people really wanted slopes. I don't know that it's that like great, but piston observer flip flop thing. Yeah, the thing is that takes up too much space. It takes up a lot of space. Like, it's gonna end up being like, oops, like. Like, it'll be like this, right? <laughs> uh, so like, this might work. Yeah, so this does work, <laughs> it looks like. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> this is stupid. <laughs> I don't even I don't even want this to work. <laughs> this is just a way of propagating the signal from here to here basically with pulses. It is kind of cool cuz this doesn't rely on like the sticky piston arms being extended to prevent each other from whatever, but this takes up the entire thing. No, it leaves a, f a four by one area here, I guess. Or five by one area over here. Yeah, it's, it's four by five. <laughs> so like, yeah, you could do this. It'd be pretty equivalent to the one we have over there, except you could fit, you can only, yeah, you won't be able to fit as many hoppers or uh, yeah, hoppers in. So. The longest time we got so far is well, the longest one I've built on this world is 22, uh, it's over here. There are 21 and a half days, but uh, somebody said they built a 25 day one. I haven't checked that one, that one out yet though. You can just see observers next to the comparators if you switch them with no lock. You can ditch the observers next to the comparators. Uh, these? Oh, no, no. Yeah, this has to be... I just want this to pulse, because, like... Oh, actually... Uh... So I can't put redstone here, because it'll block the signal from the comparator. Like a redstone block. These I'm using to get a one tick pulse to the pistons. Maybe that doesn't matter. Wait, maybe that doesn't matter. No, it does. For sure it does. Right? <laughs> yeah.
Yeah, I would have to invert it, which takes the same amount of space. So this is a design, technically. This is this is a four-wide design. Technically. <laughs> so this is... Yeah, I don't know. Infinite timers, yeah, infinite timers are easy. You just have any any clock is an infinite timer. I didn't. Or just, I guess, also just nothing. If the box was empty, you just. Here, okay, I'm going to make an infinite timer. Ready? Let's start it right. Three, two, one, go. Mission accomplished. Anyway, that's an infinite timer. Is wandering allowed? What do you mean wandering? This isn't a long. It's only been three hours, seventeen minutes. It's not a long stream, but it probably is wrapping up soon. I don't know. Got an idea you're working on a hopper fed dropper that only fires when fires the TNT when the droppers with the connected droppers run out. What? <laughs> Hopper fed dropper connected chain of hoppers that feed a dropper. Yeah, yeah, a bunch of that over here. So, this is the item despawn one, and it has a chain of hoppers that fill the item despawn one. And then this is like a hopper clock one. So, we have a hopper clock powering this dropper every, f every four minutes, and it's fed by this chain of. Hoppers. Oh, this one could be, this one could be improved probably by changing some of these to droppers. Cause like a bunch of these get powered every few seconds or not every, few, every five, every four minutes. Like this one and this one and this one all get, uh, I'll get powered automatically just as part of this clock. Every every four minutes, so we could actually expand that one a little bit. But oh, they grew up, and some of them escaped. Some of them didn't. All right, so it's already a little weird and kind of random. But all right. I can spam, right? In creative mode. I can't. I thought I thought every click killed in creative mode. Maybe I'm thinking of like a thing I did for the building game where every click everyone was at one hit point or something. Die. Okay. All right. So we still have a few chickens left in there. It is like a little bad that randomness is causing chickens to escape. Also, they could like potentially escape and land on the pressure plate. I'm not really Cuz some of them like went off through the side here, I think. Anyway, no eggs in this hopper yet. I think they've probably laid some eggs. I don't see any eggs. Yeah, maybe they, maybe they haven't yet. Oh, chicken wandering. Uh, no. Yeah, no, no, nothing. No reliance on mob AI because it's random.
flint and steel with a dropper slash dispenser. Uh, the random tick speed is going to cause fire never to like it's yeah you can't use that if that's what you're talking about. Like you should assume fire tick is off and uh, egg laying is random. No, sorry, egg laying isn't random. The eggs from the dispenser are random. Egg laying happens every five, every ten minutes. So you just need this dispenser to spawn enough chickens that you'll definitely get enough eggs to. Yeah, the the full list of rules is in the stream title. There's a link to a Google Doc. Yeah, uh, this is not like, I shouldn't have even built it in here. This is just a proof of concept to see whether or not we can capture eggs and get an infinite supply of eggs. So far, no. Well, even if egg laying is random, if you can get reliably get enough chickens that like you get a full dispenser, it doesn't matter if it's random or dropper, whatever. Like the, the point is, is, as long as like the total time of the of the timer does like the duration of the timer doesn't change by more than a couple percent you're fine it's not going to affect like if we're if we get too many eggs that's fine they'll just despawn on their own it's just only a problem if we get too few eggs and that causes random variance what do you do with the eggs you use a dropper to drop them on the ground onto a pressure plate and get a use the five minute despawn timer from the eggs to drive a clock. Um, is there some way we can turn one item one item into multiple items? Like, like we're feeding we're feeding one item at a time into these droppers, but if we could like. I don't, I don't know, like, if you could automatically turn a coal block into nine coal, like, somehow, then you could uh, probably get more compact item storage. my Twitter I don't know where my Twitter page went <laughs> I can't find my Twitter anymore maybe I closed it oh here it is Twitter melons can you oh you like break the melons or something and then you need to get it into a dropper yeah you but you so you need to get the items from the, like, okay, so, wait, you can, like, dispense, can you dispense melon blocks, or, how would you, how would you actually get the melon block to break, and you also, you, you would need dirt, right, yeah, I don't think that's gonna work, I don't think there's any way to turn it from an item into an item. Boats, okay, boats could work. Let's see, so you would dispense it into water. So let's see, let's actually do this in here because then we can put water down. So you like, does this work? Let's actually leave that alone. So you have water, 
So can we get boats? Boats are boats. Boats don't stack though. Boats aren't boats aren't going to be useful. But I don't even know if this works. Uh, just trying to get like any signal that I can into this. God, God, just let me. Okay, it put the boatway up here, but maybe it wouldn't if. Uh, there was a ceiling. It still does. Yeah, so I don't think you're going to be able to get that boat. Oh, maybe if you had a big enough area underneath. Alright, well, I don't, I don't really think it's going to be useful. Yeah, I don't think you can turn melons from items into melons into item into like sliced sliced melon items. Items using up durability. Uh, interesting. So flint and steel, I don't think would really be helpful because the durability on a flint and steel isn't like bigger than a stack because they don't stack, right? If you could do it with like a, yeah, it's the same as a stack of items. So you're not going to get like more activations out of a flint and steel than you will out of uh, just like a stack of items. So I don't think that's going to be particularly great. Oh, somebody laid an egg. They're on the ground. Yeah, I don't think they're going to make it into here. Oh, unbreaking. Uh, yeah, unbreaking is random. What about fire charges? A stack of despawn timers doesn't like get you any extra time. Like, how do you put them together in a way to get extra time? Well, if if your if your thing lasts years in real life, then the randomness of breaking wouldn't be entirely negligible because it could mean the difference of like days or weeks or you know even more. So, no, that's not that's not a good argument. Hopper dropper fighting system. I'm not sure what that means. I mean, I, I know what that means. I'm not sure how you, how you like use it. Why is there a chest in this design? Oh, I see you like, oh, I see that waits until the chest fills up or something. No, the the dropper velocity thing, like you can, it's really easy to put a bound on the amount of like variance that can cause because per five minute item, the variance is like two or three ticks, like game ticks. Like, the amount of time that it takes for the item to drop 
onto the pressure plate, like th that really only varies by like three ticks per five minutes. So it's like much, much, much less than a percent. Whereas the randomness from unbreaking could potentially cause like several percent change depending on how many, I mean, it, like depends on how many, um, flint and steel you have, but like there is a lot of averages, but the variance is still going to be several percent, I think. Like each flint and steel could probably take between like, you know, 200 and 300 clicks to use. And so if you have multiple flint and steel, it'll bring the variance down, but it's still going to be several percent. El Crapo, was that using like a different design or is it just like a tweaked version of something that we've already done? Yeah, significantly random is kind of arbitrary. I'm not going to deny that. I I just think that like the pressure plate thing is so un insignificant. It obviously falls on the correct side of the randomness. <laughs> integer overflow okay that's that's kind of interesting to me adrian kenobi <laughs> oh uh yeah i mean you can tweet if you have a design that is better than all the other designs so far feel free to tweet it at me and i can take a look at it later um but if it's if it's like a tweak of a current design i'm not going to try and build it right now i want to try i want to try and find something actually new Minecart furnace velocity because it's so slow. I don't think there's any way to actually fuel a minecart furnace. Yeah, we, we tried over here to get the chickens on top of the, I don't know. I think if the chickens were high enough that they could spawn eggs into the hopper, then they would also suffocate in the uh, obsidian that's above it. I think you should try pushing minecart hoppers with pistons and slab slash snow layers or using angled rails. To... I don't know what you would do even if you got a minecart hopper on top of another block. Like, I don't know how that's useful. How did I fit a hopper clock in there? Uh, I took one, one of the sides and basically this is the hopper clock. This is just a dropper instead of the hopper, but I took one of the sides and moved it around to the side instead of like this, which is the traditional way. So normally it's two by six. This is a little bit different. It activates whenever you place a block above the timer dropper. Uh,
Whenever you, uh, what, how are you going to place a block above the timer dropper? Yeah, the best design so far is about 25 days. It's based on item a uh, five-minute item despawn timer. On a pressure plate. Oh, you're saying that starts it? You're saying that starts it. Um... Okay, so it's based on the, yeah, okay, it's based on the pressure plate item despawn thing. All right, so that's fine. If you want to tweet it to me and it's really long, then that's fine. Um, I'll take a look at it later. I don't want to look at it during the stream. Actually, here, I'll... Uh, Oh, but I see. It's it's longer, but it also relies on being able to place a button somewhere. I'm not allowing you to place a button. Yeah, arrow despawn on a button isn't is just going to be one fifth as long as item despawn on a pressure plate. Yeah, bone mealing with a dispenser isn't allowed. Because it's random. Right? Wait, is it random? Maybe it's not. I guess it, I'm not sure how you're saying to use that. Yeah. Yeah, okay, it's random. Yeah, that's what I thought. Oh, it grows every time. But that, yeah, I don't, that's not like a, I don't think that's really a useful clock or anything. And also you would have to like somehow replant or something. Yeah, so here's the binary clock that I posted on my stream. Sorry, what? posted in my video last week um, but you can't really fit that many in and it this ends up and you need some clock to drive it to so anyway this ends up being 12 seconds it's not really that good yeah but so you destroy the piston replant with a dispenser but like it's gonna be like fairly big and it's also gonna be like a fairly fast clock so I don't I don't think that's gonna be useful like you need, basically you need the clock to either be like significantly smaller than the hopper hopper clock and still last like a while or you need the counter to be significantly smaller than the hopper dropper counter. And still contain a lot, like still count pretty high before overflowing and resetting. Also, I don't know if you can even grow seaweed on top of obsidian. It seems like you probably couldn't. Oh, okay. Sounds like you can. Slow down the hopper clock with an additional clock. 
Um, I don't think that's more efficient. Like, so here's the hopper clock. So in order to slow it down, we would have to have like another clock right here that's like on most of the time and pulses off. And that's gonna cut off the like supply of of extra items to the counter dropper. So like if you could come up with a clock that pulls off every like Like I could see that being viable. Like it's sort of like the whatever the percentage of time that it's off. So if you, Hang on, that actually that actually might be pretty good. If you could have a clock that's All right, I'm just going to copy and paste this whole thing and I'm going to try that out real quick. Uh, oops. So we're saying take out all this crap. And then we want like some pretty long clock or like not it doesn't have to be that long. It just has to like So, so what I think would make sense is you have like a torch here that's like freezing it most of the time. Is that going to affect this dropper? I think it will. Anyway, or maybe like a sticky piston. I don't know. Let's, oh, there's... Oh, wait. Oh, this thing overfilled. Uh, jeez. Oh, uh, here. Okay. I think, we're, I think we're fine now. Yeah, the, the clock was stopped working. So you have like this piston. Is this broken? I I must. Oh, it's probably because of this. Okay. Sure. Hmm. No, I'm not sure how you like. I'm not sure how you make a clock that fits into this space. That like powers this without interfering with the comparator. And also, like, is only pulse pulses off for a very short amount of time. Yeah, I, I don't know. This is not a lot of space to work with. Yeah, so despawn clock does do that, but it also has a limited supply of items. Like the despawn clock is really never going to be useful for this. Like, despawn clock will never be useful with anything else except for, like, hoppers supplying it. No, I didn't eat food yet. I'm getting hungry. Chain of despawn timers isn't longer. No. It takes some thinking, but you can probably figure out why if you think pretty hard. 
you you cannot do anything with with despawn timers except supply a larger stock of items to despawn. Anything else you try and do is not going to make it last any longer. Or not significantly longer anyway. Uh, when I was at Microsoft, I mostly did prototyping. I wonder if there's anything else you could put in a dispenser that would be interesting. Like, is the, does the dispensers page on Minecraft Wiki like does it list the things that it works with? If there's something else interesting. You can equip a player, you can shoot an arrow, you can place a boat if there's water, bone meal, bottle of enchanting, eggs, snowball, splash potion, lingering potion, bucket, collects stuff, fire charge, launches a fireball, fireworks rocket, flint and steel, buckets of things. Minecarts. Hmm. Player heads. Interesting. And bucket and uh, pumpkins. Spawn egg, of course. TNT. I wonder if there's a clock using TNT that's like really compact. Probably not. I don't, I don't see how exactly you would do anything with that. Trident. Shears. Shears, shears a sheep. Uh, Yeah, but there's no way to get sheep, right? Okay. Like, if you just dispense TNT into a little obsidian chamber, it wouldn't affect the rest of the stuff. Uh, Skelecorp, I can, and I did. Yeah, the furnace and lava buckets thing doesn't work because you can't really extract items or place in new items to burn. So it would just like go until it's done and then you can't reuse that furnace at all. Yeah, so like I could dispense TNT and use the TNT as a timer, but like I don't think I'm going to get a signal out of that to like loop it. And, like, it's probably not, like, that's not going to be any better than the, like, because it uses up the TNT, so it's not going to be any better than the item despawn timer. I'm hungry. What are we trying to make? We're trying to make the longest possible delay between pressing a button and TNT igniting. Uh, and the mechanics for that delay have to be contained inside a five by five and one block tall area. Yeah, we've been talking about flint and steel, but flint and steel only has 64 durability. So it's like, and it doesn't stack. So it's like the same as yeah, it would have to last five minutes to even yeah even come close to the same as like a despawn clock, and 
I don't know of a way to make a flint and steel last that long. I think you. I think you just kind of need a smaller clock or a smaller counter, smaller resettable counter. What if you? Um, all right, let me try something. Let me think of something here. So if you had. Uh, Say you have two droppers facing each other. And you provide a signal to both. But like one is powered already and the other isn't. So like, so here, That drops into there, again, and then we like toggle which one is powered. Uh, I don't think it's gonna end up being more compact, but this is like basically the same thing as the hopper thing. I will want this. I don't know if I need that the observer. I might need. I don't need the dropper. Okay. So like. Okay, I kind of have an idea here. I don't think it's going to end up being more compact, but. Oops. Let's see. And this gets empty. Let's just do this. So, what? Oh, the comparator is not reading from. Oh, I see. Uh, okay, let's actually let's put this on the other side. Oh, I can't put it on the other side. Uh. Shoot. Okay. Observers are annoying to work with. Like, because they face only a certain direction. I don't know. I guess they'd be more annoying if they read signals from everywhere nearby. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I don't think it's gonna work like I want it to. Like I, I need an observer going into a whatever observer. Piston. Comparator block. Still not reading it because, of course, not. Okay. Except this isn't gonna. Uh, yeah, the observer's not observing anything. Um, whatever. Okay. Yeah, it's just getting one item at a time. I wish there was a way. I wish there was a way to easily make the observer only t only trigger on like one edge of the redstone pulse. Like if there was a block that only updated when it got a pulse, or something. I don't know. Yeah, I don't I don't think it was gonna do what I wanted to do. Yeah, it's. 
five by five by one or five by one by five. It's like this. Hmm. All right. Well. Anyone have any other ideas? Leaf stone? Uh, I don't know. And the binary counter hasn't been very useful so far. Try using locking repeaters. Note blocks only pulse when being powered, but then they pulse twice. Like powered on, powered off. Or do they, oh, maybe they don't. Okay, hold on, let's try that. That might actually be what I'm thinking of. Okay, so we have this, this, Two droppers, comparator, note block. All right, this isn't going to be quite as compact as I want it to be. Well, I can just test this real quick. Yeah, it does it on both edges. There's a powered and unpowered state of the note block. Welcome back, C. Cohen here. Thanks for resubbing for 22 months. What triggered me to get back into Minecraft? Uh, I said it in the video that uh, the first like redstone po video i posted last week uh, my friend's kid asked me if i do have a way to make a se sequential combo lock and i didn't so i wanted to try it and then i kept trying other things too all right all right well this didn't work i am gonna go and eat lunch and uh not do this anymore <laughs> I'll, I'll i'll make a video about this so if you have a design that you think lasts longer i think the record was 25 days i'm not sure if that person tweeted it to me but tweet it to me tweet me and i'll and i'll uh, i'll look at different designs and see what the best one is and uh and i'll add it to the list and um and i'll credit you of course and please don't Please don't like just copy someone else's design or anything like that. You did twenty six point eight days. All right, well tweet tweet that over because that might be the 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 best so far. But uh, yeah, yeah, I'm gonna end the stream. Thanks for watching, everybody. This was fun. It's cool. It was, I feel like it was a pretty interactive stream, which which I was like. Uh, all right, Jake LP twenty one just just post it in chat right now, and I'll try and uh, right, put put a picture of it with your name in it, and I'll open it in a tab and and uh, and then I'll be able to credit you too. Miko, Miko, it's okay. Miko, say goodbye to the stream. Bye, everyone. Wanna say goodbye? No? Okay. Thanks for watching. <laughs>